Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome uh, once again to the uh, <clears throat> deepest law. Those of you moaning that I'm late, listen, time is notional to a man like me. Time is for the ant man. <laughs> um, but, uh, you, you know, we're not that late. Only five minutes. I um, I decided to, I, I had, I've had enough of my, of my laptop, which is continually melting, running, like, doesn't have enough power. Um, I've had it since 2018, and I think it's it's high time that I bought myself a new desktop. So I went to Curry's, um, and um, I'm just going to like buy like the most expensive one they got, <laughs> basically, and uh, stick it against taxes. What do you reckon? Anyway, hello, uh, daughter of Albion. Hello. Welcome to the show. Well, thank you for whizzing back home to make this. AA sent me a screenshot of him on the dual carriageway. <laughs> <laughs> like three, four minutes to go. <laughs> um, Very impressive. Yes, uh, here I am. Um, so, uh, yes, just before we uh, start, um, I will. I should mention that uh, uh, you should buy Foundations of uh, Politics, which is now out. Um, in fact, uh, maybe I'll put. Maybe I'll stick on a sale during this stream. Which could then like fund my new my new desktop? What do you reckon? Maybe, I'll, maybe I'll okay. Maybe I'll think about that. Um, Shameless. Well, I mean, come on, Shameless. it's a lot of money, but but also it will be. Um, you know, I'll. Well, there's I'll a gaming chair that goes with it, isn't there? That you were looking at. <laughs> yeah, I think I'm going to go either. Okay, that gaming chair is hideous. Uh, so, but you know, I'm, still, nicest... I'm just sitting on a dining chair here, like a wicker dining chair. So it's not very first problems. Well, exactly. Um, okay, so speaking of first world problems, um, this we are we have in the past couple of weeks, both myself and DOA here have made videos on um, an issue that not enough people talk about. Um, uh, which, I mean, forgive forgive us. You know, this is the afternoon. Deepest Law is a nice kind of cakes and tea sort of show. I'm drinking a Fanta Zero today, by the way. Um, but, um, <laughs> but yeah, I don't know why I, I decided to switch from. Uh, I'm drinking Fanta Zero. Yeah. Oh, Fanta. Is that right? I, I thought you. I thought you. I thought you'd um, be into Fanta, given its roots. Do you, do you know about that? <laughs> something to do with slavery? Is that right? <laughs> no. Um, no? It was it was something, something to do with a with a certain set of mid century Germans. Um, oh yeah, the the Sturman Drang school. <laughs> yeah, something about like I don't know, like I I remember I reading that. somewhere that Fanta has like Nazi roots or something. Really? Um, yeah. Why you'd relate that to me? But... I I don't know. You're just that you know. You're just that woman <laughs> who appears on women. You know, watching you on Women's Hour is very interesting. Doa the sheer levels of power. The sheer power levels. Um, I have no power. I have no power on that show. I'm totally dominated. No, that's by what I'm saying. The sheer, the sheer Facebook. power levels that are hidden, that are hidden when you and like Birdie and uh... when the dynamics play out. I'm a, I'm a softy. <laughs> everybody can see I'm a total pansy. I'm just walked over. <laughs> you just like sitting there talking about knitting and men or whatever. <laughs> you, like... <laughs> you just see like when. You know, you're dominated by Poe talking about like uh, you absolutely know, steamrollered and by Birdie. But I yet, um, when, when Poe was on maternity leave, AA didn't even ask me to stand in, it was just like automatically, uh, yeah, agreed goes upon to the that next, Birdie would take it because most... she's she, she's the next most alpha. 
<laughs> didn't they expose the most uh, butch woman, yeah, or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't hate. I said assertive. All oh, right, yeah, okay. Um, oh, but but, um, but yes, we are gathered here today because both um, DOA and myself in the past couple of weeks have made videos about um, the fact that there appears to be just hiding out in the open uh, blatantly um, people who are both into anime who appear to be, to put two final points on it, nonces. Um, that is like, I mean, there's so many, there's so many different things to get into because uh, two weeks ago I made a video called OG Roland Rat Triggers Hero High and an Army of Weebs. Um, I made a tweet which went kind of semi-viral, um, which said something like, grown men should not have avatars of 12-year-old schoolgirls um, or manga schoolgirls or something. Mm -hmm. And this was picked up by this bloke I called Hero. Girl, yeah, this was picked up by this bloke called Hero High, who's this... Um, I don't know, like some Twitch streamer or something. Some non-streamer. I don't really understand the whole scene, but um, he kind of he is, he actually weirdly assumed that I was come I, that I was some sort of like Reddit tier kind of soy boy trying to strafe trying to strafe that crowd <laughs> from the left in some way, which I don't. Which is again a dynamic I don't really understand. Which then led to um, me going on the warpath a little bit. And, um, you know, I sent the bat signal out. And uh, who came riding in on her steed? But um, <laughs> daughter of Albion herself, who's also, um, I mean, I think it's safe to say you've been pretty incensed by some of the material that we, uh, we've come across. I'm which actually is just not like, I'm primarily repulsed by it, if I'm honest. I mean, it's not like we have to go to like Pornhub to find this stuff. It's we just didn't like, go looking for it. It, it came looking just, for us, didn't it? It's just there, and and not just there. There in replies to us, mm -hmm. like literally just in our replies, basically in our mentions from people who um, otherwise um, make out like they have kind of conservative views and are mm -hmm. on the right wing and so on. Um, so that there's so many different things i want to get into um i mean what the, the, yeah. before we even get into the question of underage girls and why this stuff exists at all and why it's tolerated and why it's out in the open um there's a there's the, the issue before that which is why are why are so many grown men um representing themselves as kind of schoolgirls, prepubescent schoolgirls. Mm -hmm. I find this very odd. Um, and I've seen so much cope in, in response uh, to that. Like, for example, um, you know, the, the idea that your avatar is just some random image, for example, and not, you know, telling the world something about yourself. Mm -hmm. Like, for example... You have the Peter Rabbit <laughs> avatar, Rabbit. right? But that is not like an accident. That's telling the world well, something about yourself, right? I chose it because I thought I'd get away with saying more hardline things if I had a, a sort of fairly sweet and cutesy. And plus, I'm a girl, so you know, yeah, girls are allowed so these things. With you're respect. a girl, and you're saying, you know, I'm I'm cute. I like cute bun. I, I also, like... I can get away with saying these things whilst maybe you know. <laughs> yes softening um, the image somewhat it, it, yes um but mm -hmm. you know how can i put this uh i just find it very odd that um out of all the it's very commonplace though isn't it yeah out of all the possible images in the world um these men are choosing like 12 year old girls to represent themselves so i mean people have talked about like digital blackface <laughs> You seen that? Phrase? <laughs> yeah, of course. But, but is this not like digital yeah. transgenderism or something? Like, or like, you're what are you telling me about yourself? Like, you're telling me that you are best represented by a schoolgirl, and that's the thing that you want me to know about yourself. It's not like a random yeah. thing. 
Is it? The anime the animator trans pipeline is real. I mean, I'm gonna I'm gonna start by answering the inevitable objection here, which is that obviously avatars to some extent will be either for sock accounts or anonymity. So oft times people will choose something silly just as a uh, you know, in, in terms of practicality, logging on. I would say if you, if you look at these accounts, it's because we've we generated a great, we attracted a great deal of salt, did we not? Just from, yeah, I think it was your your tweet that started it. So these people came to us. I would never have thought about making a video on anime were it not for Weepgate a couple of weeks ago. Um, what, what I was is absolutely the sheer staggered. level of the sheer and level very of irate, salt. very vicious and nasty, and which is why it's evidently important because we've clearly hit a nerve. So it's worth a deep dive. Yeah, and I mean. What, Let's t- but just before we get into the the main topics here, mm-hmm. let's just deal with some of the attacks that both you and I have faced. Because, I mean, I faced you're drawing attention to this, therefore you must be a pedo yourself, which is just like <laughs> you know a variation on you know th- th- this was an old this was an old argument they used to use on right wingers in the in the nineties or in mm-hmm. the eighties if you remember anybody who cares about um anyone who's like anti-gay marriage for example must be a closeted gay themselves you know right do you remember that whole argument it's just um i mean it's just such a dishonest dishonest frame that and Mm -hmm. um i I, you know so, so that's the that's the first one that i faced another one i faced was um just people like randomly just assuming i was a christian and pointing out like yeah but what about the what about the catholic priests though Let's not talk about the Catholic priests, fucker. Let's talk about the fact that you've got a prebubescent schoolgirl in your avatar and you're continually posting pictures of them bending over. I mean, it's it's not normal and it shouldn't be tolerated. No, but a, there's a... another aspect here, which is that they seem to be more in conservative circles. What are they doing here and how did they how did they get over here? And can they leave, please? Um, they're, they're, um they're, there's a few other, there's a few other attacks though right what are some of the attacks that you've had like you know that uh, you're uh, that you're bitter roasty, or that you je- jealous roasty but western women can't compete with cartoons and therefore um that's my objection but the obvious answer of course is of course well no you, you can't compete with inanimate objects so it, so it is it is going to be a problem actually but uh yeah a lot of kind of scorn and um it's evidently hit a very raw nerve. And I think that that's, that's because it betrays ultimately a level of shame that these people know that there's something wrong with what they're doing, else they wouldn't be fussed. So they're just lashing out wildly. Basically. Presumably. They, they lash out wildly, yeah. Um, okay. So let, let me just get to the list of things that we that uh, I wrote to you earlier on mm. that I wanted to oh, yeah. get at. So, so that, that there's three main things I want to talk about here mm-hmm. and you, we can go we, i'll let you pick the order okay okay there's the, there's the obvious like the pedo aspect okay and i'm not talking about so a, another thing that these people do is they start to try to get into the lolita argument about the age of consent and where it should be like should you know should it be mm-hmm. uh 16 or should it be 50 you know um but also um they cope that it's art and therefore there should be free <laughs> It should be freedom. Oh yeah, it's not re- it's not real. Therefore, it's, it's okay. Yeah. It's, rad- it's radical um, art, right? Mm. But like when we're not talking about fifteen year olds. In some cases, these are these are eight, nine, ten year old schoolgirls. Like blatantly, you know, <laughs> I don't care if the law says they're two thousand years old. They've chosen to depict themselves as a prepubescent yeah. schoolgirl. So there's something. They're in the body of that, that, presumably. Yeah. Yes, yeah. of course. Something completely nonsy about it. Yeah, it's not. Oh. By the, uh, and this is this is the thing. I I, I I guess I could understand more maybe the anime uh, portrayals of girls with tits and ass type thing. But but it, overwhelmingly, it is the little girl, is it not? That's what I've seen overwhelmingly. Yeah, and and often like a kind of um, uh, an innocent or crying little girl, or yes, a... with a teddy bear or a back school backpack and her pencil case. I mm-hmm. mean, it's fucking sinister. Once upon a time, a yeah. normal society would have shut this shit down and just like banned it straight out. Um, mm-hmm. You know, I mean, in my video, I I, I referenced um, monkey 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 dust. If anybody remembers that, where you've got that pervy guy who's got the the tin of pilchards, you know, like who's pretending to be a little girl online. You know, 
that that was a trope once upon a time but mm -hmm. you know so so strange is our is our age at this point that um th you know that this is just seen as normal like oh what's wrong with you boomer you don't understand boomer <laughs> what are you talking about i am the person right i am the person who codified boomer truth regime the boomers are one of the most degenerate and despicable generations of all time so don't, don't claim that this is something this is do, zuma like, this is zuma this is zuma issue or, or yeah. millennial i think more zuma it, though this is this is something that we that we are getting at it's nothing to do with generations this is to do with just like a, a basic moral norm. One, men should be men and not fucking schoolgirls. And number two, when you're set when you're sexualizing <laughs> schoolgirls, that's not okay. Mm -hmm. Right? I mean, people coming up with um, oh, it's the trad thing to do. Um, you know, in this country, um, you know, in the 12th century, they, they married at the age of 12. Okay, just just fuck off with it. I mean, why are you trying to lower the age of consent to, down to twelve year olds? What the fuck's wrong do, with do you? Think that's, do you think that's what, how it's? Because I was trying to think how has this found its way on the right. I don't know if this is one of the reasons because you find this with the sort of the Islam simps as well, which is well they're based because at least she's fertile at twelve. Uh, you know, um, I, I don't know. Is is there no, a reason that no, I, it I has don't, to be twelve? I, I don't think it's come from the trad angle. If I'm honest. I think, think the way they find themselves selves, um, into the right is through the libertarian pipeline. I bet right. you the I bet you if you if you did a, a really deep analysis of all of these um, all of these people with uh, the, their manga avatars and so on, they're also like into crypto. I bet you, or, or like gold, <laughs> right? I bet you they're all into like crypto and gold, <laughs> and they're um, you know, and they read they read uh, they read like Hydration backpacks. They read like Hopper and um, mm. Mises, and you know that's probably why they're in my audience. You know, because I I ca I also came from. I was going to say that's, that, that's your crowd, isn't it? From the more economic background, um, but they then but they see that they, they then they want to make this move of well, it's just the free market, bro. It's just like it's just mm. like why you wanna why you wanna snap on snack? No, no. <laughs> it's not. Well, like, I did. I, I, I did find a debate between Sargon and a, a guy called, Lu is it Louis Livo or Louis Livo? I, I, I'm yes. not hating on the guy, but this is for actually from three years ago. So, uh, you know, I'm a, I'm a little out of date in even finding this stuff. But he his argument in this, this conversation was essentially, yeah, freedom of speech, like the radical. Who cares? As long as it's free, you can have any degeneracy you want. Are we still in this zone? I mean, are we still going? Yeah, I mean, as long as it's free, as long as it's just a free market, just just let paedophilia go, bro. There's, just there's let a it market, be. There's a market. What for about standards, though? I mean, well, <laughs> that was it. That was his argument. It's free. Let people enjoy no. what they want. How about no? Just ban. How can that be remotely people. desirable? Yes, indeed. <laughs> um, so anyway, this is one aspect, the pedo aspect, and okay. we've got some. Yep. We've got some, I mean, we've tried to pick out images that I could actually share on here because some of the stuff it's is difficult revolting. to find ones you can share. Yeah. Yeah. I well, mean, I, if you I really did, want I, to see the depths of it, just type lolly on, what was it you said, DOA? On Twitter. Type, just type lolly, lolly on Kong. Twitter and scroll. Lolly you know. or lolly con. And I, I, I only looked it up because I, I, you see it as a hashtag in lots of the anime. And as I say, these are only people, one or two people removed from me, my account. Uh, who who came to comment on my profile? Who are now, of course, blocked and unfollowed. But uh, hashtag lolly, and then when you click on lolly, it's hashtag cunny, and then it goes into oh, yeah, basically yeah. breed them, breed them young. Ew, gross. <laughs> and by the way, they are explicit, and by explicit, I don't mean like oh, a little bit cheeky. I mean like full penetration, girls on their knees. It's it's really. St I'm pretty shocked by it. Yeah, and that, and that, what, I'm, what I'm saying is without pulling these images up. They are blatantly mm. prepubescent, but yes. they're prepubescent DOA. It's not yes, like they they're, yeah. they're, you know, this is like, I don't know why it's tolerant. I, ju I just cannot understand why, like, I mean, this is the absurdity we're in, right? You you go on Twitter now and you, um, I don't know, like call out some tranny or something, you'll get banned, right? But this shit is just allowed to fly, like by the Twitter mm -hmm. terms of service. Like, I don't understand. Like, I mean, I don't know if um, you know Aaron McIntyre, but he's got that famous um, 
famous meme that goes around, you know, tap the sign hour on. And it's just like, it's not difficult. Yes. They just want to fiddle, mm. they just want to mm. fiddle your kids. Yes, yes. I mean, exactly. this is it's like. Not, it's not complicated. <laughs> um, these accounts have it, thousands of followers, though. It's not, I mean, somebody said, well, uh, you know, if you, if you look up anything on Twitter, you're going to find a few oddballs. But I'm talking pages and pages, hundreds of thousands. And um, a lot of them are all following so called, you know, Ben Shapiro and conservative, base conservative peoples. There were hundreds of them in my comments, you Indeed, know. Indeed. Exactly. And they, I mean, obviously, obviously, they're never going to ratio me. I think <laughs> ratio, but. <laughs> Has it ever happened? <laughs> no, not even on, um, not even the last time I, uh, <laughs> Not even the last time I gave the weebs a kicking um, over. Uh, <laughs> what was that about? I, I'm trying to remember. Um, uh, yeah, the abs. Oh, the remember? abs. The abs. Yeah, they didn't even really show right, that. Right, right, right. And they tried. They really did try as well. Boy, even with their like 300,000 follower accounts, they still couldn't we're do it. You're going to have to make this a sort of uh, um, every couple of months, you're going to have to have a new wave of, <laughs> of uh, but, cleansing. You know, you know, people are like, oh, well, you shouldn't kick the hornet's nest. I was like, why the fuck is there a hornet's nest? Why isn't the, the hornet's, hornet's nest? The hornets flew like, at me. Yeah, but why is the hornet's why is there a hornet's yeah. nest of fucking open paedophiles, you know, prowling the internet, attacking anyone who criticizes them? You know, the hornet's nest should be lanced. It should be it should be um cut out like a cancer, it should be burnt on a fucking pile. Pe pe um, pest control. We're, we're just pest control. Exactly, we are pest control. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, Mary White House <laughs> Brigade, <laughs> as, you, as you put it, right? Um <laughs> Mm -hmm. Before before I get through the the other two points here, and we'll okay, go, fine. we're going to go through each of them. I've just remembered another defense that gets pulled out. Right? Do you remember that show Brass Eye from the nineties? Yes, of um, course, of course. Yes, Chris Morris. Yes. Well, Brass Eye did a whole episode called like Pedo Island or whatever, where they were just. Attacking, I remember like, it. They were attacking, um, you know, ostensibly they were making fun of tabloid right wing tabloid newspapers for trying to draw mm -hmm. attention to paedophilia is a problem and they were poking fun of media hysteria around this issue okay mm. let me just let me just say something I, I think people cling too much to um you know fucking nonsense 90s um degenerate comedy like like chris morris why should that be a sacred cow right that mm. fucker was working at the bbc and he made that show at the same time as they were covering up the Jimmy Savile stuff. Okay. Um, you, you know, stuff like Rotherham and stuff has come out. Did Chris mm -hmm. Morris come out and like come out loudly against the grooming gangs? Did he, um, did he come out That's loudly awesome. against like Jimmy Savile? No, he fucking didn't. But yeah, he was perfectly happy to make fun of people who were trying to draw attention to those sorts of issues in the late nineties. So don't give me that, um, mm -hmm. that, that clip that incidentally, Another another comedy act in the '90s who did that was Leon Herring, and um, that clip I play at the start of the show is from Fist of Fun. They did a sketch making fun of uh, ah. people who were trying to draw attention to Sim Jimmy Savile. You know, it's just like another lunatic right wing conspiracy theory back then. You know, yes, well, like um, the Mary Whitehouse is a meme, but actually, as you as you've always said, Mary Whitehouse did nothing wrong. Yeah, Mary Whitehouse expensive. did nothing wrong. Absolutely, she did, she did nothing, nothing wrong. wrong. So um, yeah, I, I just think that people should. Um, people, no, Morris was not post Savile. No, he, no, he wasn't. Brass Eye, Brass Eye, uh, was on in the late nineties. Savile came out in two thousand and thirteen or whatever it was. So don't give me that shit. Mm. Um, and by the way, let's just be clear. This isn't an effort to kind of cleanse like uh, the GamerGate stuff. I, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna sort of force people to stop it, but. Uh, can we not just have some standards? Isn't that what conservatives are meant to be about? Some basic standards. So, um, second, second thing I want to get know. at DOA uh, over the course of this stream, mm -hmm. the out group, the out group preference aspect. Yes. And the fact and the cope defenses revolving around, oh, they're so trad, you know, the, the, the trad Japanese, the base Japanese, <laughs> right? <laughs> I want to fucking destroy this meme. Because, okay. I mean, some of the stuff I found in the past couple of weeks, you know, I don't know if I'm going to show the, the Chung Lee scene. But please, I mean, please. You know, That's going to be one of the best. <laughs> okay, yeah, we'll, we'll get into that. And then the third, <laughs> the third um, element is the real world impact on behavior. Because another set of copes is, right, it's just online. 
it doesn't have any like real world effect. Oh, it's right, just right. like mm -hmm. um, this is the same argument as um, video games cause violence. Um, yes. Uh, let me let me just say something. It has an obvious impact on real world behavior, as we'll get to when I get to the fucking Chung Li cosplayers and the and the other shit that goes on. Okay. Mm -hmm. I mean, you, you're telling me that at the same time that there's something like a seven hundred you know, 2000% increase in trannies who all happen to wear little, little schoolgirl checkered fucking manga miniskirts that um, it's not having an effect on real world behavior. It's just, it's just random that uh, all of the, you know, every single tranny I ever see apart from Evelyn um, seems to be into this shit. Like they, um, I mean, I, have you ever seen that yeah. face that the manga girls pull when they stick their tongue out? Yeah, you know like that? that. Ah, that kind yeah. of, and the little, the little exclamation marks above the head, and the little. Yeah. Now, yeah. I, I, I can't remember what you call that face, that gurn that they do. It's like a, you know, <laughs> it's got a special. It's got like a. It's that. It's got like a special. Name, I know what you mean. Right? Um. Yeah. You, you. I see people type type it out as an emoji. Um. Or it's like a little face. Yeah, yeah like that sticky out tongue. I've seen. Mm. I, I see a lot of the the trannies or the femboys and so on. They pull that face. That yeah. that's like the that's like a kind of femboy face to pull, you know. Mm -hmm. So um there we go. All right. Um uh what's it what's it called that face, people? Somebody must Did know. Anyone know? Yeah, Belle Delphine. I mean that right. sticky out tongue face. I mean, what, but what is it? What is it saying that face? Let's take, let's, let's just, let's just call it out. What, what is that stick out tongue saying in, at the end of it's, the day? It's girly and uh, quite infantile, I suppose. It's, it's but... girly, infantile, and there's something else. Okay, I'll just let you use your imagination. It's what is, what is it? Tongue out. It's, a, it's a sexual gesture, isn't it? It's a sexual gesture, and it's the sort of thing that you, you know, sort of face you might pull, you know, if confronted with. <laughs> You know, you fill in the blanks yourself. All right, where should we start? Um, shall, shall I share some images first of all? Yeah, yeah. Let, let, and but can we just can we just reaffirm? Neither of you, in, neither you nor I, had talked about this previously. All of this came to us, and we just ended up having a discussion about how amazed we were at at the fury, the way, and really hundreds of people at one point were getting in on the action. So, and I, I, I've had them in my comments since the video, and I've had emails. So, you know. I, let's just be clear. This sort of started with them coming to us. I don't think that we we're not seeking to sort of uh, to be. I wouldn't. Or I wouldn't have made my initial the initial video I made if it hadn't caused such fucking outrage. I mean, it caused so much outrage that some dude with three hundred thousand followers made a hit piece on me. <laughs> Well, that's what I want to tap into. Why? What the outrage is? What is that vein of outrage, and why is it so sensitive? Yeah, I reckon it, it's because they know there's something wrong with it. Exactly. Now, just to be clear, right? People are saying, "Oh, you know, this is the collection on my." Like, if this is not. These are screen grabs of replies. I took the to, screen grabs. Yeah, I took screen them, grabs so. that DOA has taken from I sent them. from um, Twitter Twitter replies and things like that. Okay. And some of these guys, I mean, I've blocked, my, I've blocked most of these guys now. There's a guy called Matrix who's been following me for years, who's just come out as like a hardcore bloody you know, defender of noncery. Like he's got absolute like... Absolute open. And he's got like stats and graphs and things like that to try to defend <laughs> his position. I mean, what the fuck? Um, so anyway, let me see if I can share my screen here. Um um, is it going to allow me to share our chat? This is tip of the iceberg as well. I mean, I mean, well, most of the stuff we can't share. I mean, I, I put some, I put some stuff on the thumbnail. Um, mm -hmm. Let's let me just see if I can share. If it'll let me share our Telegram. Do you mind me sharing our Telegram chat? Do you? Eh? No, I mean it's full but, of memes and gifts and basically yeah. slagging off weebs anyway, isn't it? Okay, I'll just be sure I don't go up. But, all right. <laughs> okay. Smooth, smooth, see, get that, get your ass home. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Hurry the fuck up. Okay. Can everybody see this? Yeah. Is it showing a picture there? Let's have a look. Uh no, it's just. Oh yes, there's there's that recent screenshot of. That was a, that was one of the first responses I got from someone, openly telling me that. Is that the one you mean? 
Hold on a minute. Let me see if I can get it to share that picture there. There we go. Can you see that now? Yeah. It should be pulling that? out the picture. Yes. Yes. Okay. So basically someone responding saying that, uh, hang on, I'll put it up on my own screen so I can see it better. Blah, 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 blah. Uh, Bertie Bassett, where are you? There you are. Um, okay, so so this was so somebody who had basically res uh, responded asking, hang on, I've lost it. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I'm sharing it on the screen right now. I know, but it's quite small. Oh, right. Oh, regrettably, great. regrettably. But um, I'll make it bigger. If you can see it, can you can you read it? <laughs> yeah. All right. It says, it says, so this is from R R R Remit Sunni with an 18 mm -hmm. crossed out. What does that mean? That they're under 18? It means, um, yeah, no, no, it means uh, the content on this page is, is like censored, I guess, 18, 18 rated, I guess. I don't know. Uh, I thought it meant. I thought it meant that the actual person is like under eighteen, but I, I could be wrong there. I don't, I don't know. know. I don't speak nonce, I'm afraid, so I don't really understand their weird <laughs> codes what... and things. I don't. <laughs> but anyway, anyway, and it's eighteen, eighteen plus only. Like the content. Anyway, it, it says quite literally, many lolicons are just CSA survivors. Just because we cope differently doesn't make our way of coping any worse. Therapy therapists approve of it. Psychologists approve of it. Yet fucking idiots keep trying to gatekeep being a CSA survivor just because they don't like it. What what's what's a CSA survivor, do you know? Right, it's, it's CSA is child sexual assault or abuse. Um so 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 there's an admit look, if that's true, then obviously that's tragic. I'm very sorry to learn that. But it is also an admission that Lollicon is therefore a medium for adults who have a misplaced but attraction to children. Isn't it also the case that most pedophiles have some history of abuse in their background mm -hmm. as well? I believe I believe so. It's a common, which, as I say, is tragic. And, uh, but, mm. But that, I mean, that that is what pedophiles say. I'm a victim that, that of abuse. A, <laughs> right? That's I mean, just an just like, Yes, what? so there's there's an admission here that, that this is content that is being used by people with nefarious interests in children, right? So <laughs> there's your admission. I mean, uh, and then they go off and make their discomfort everybody else's problem when in the majority of the world, nobody really gives a shit about lollies. It's only in a few places where people will actually get arrested mm -hmm. for lolly due to how, how their state and their country views lolly. That doesn't mean that lolly is inherently bad. Here's a few sources. <laughs> Fuck it I looked at the sources and it was just links to like uh, how art can be used as therapy. It was fairly redundant stuff. It, it didn't seem to have any link no, to. No, mm. I, I have to say, me zeroing in on this, okay, mm. is not just like I, I don't think it's just an accident that this is this is happening, because I'm convinced, um, DOA, that the next frontier from the left will be trying to push for this shit. They've already started. Oh, yes, 100%. 100%. They, it, it, and I see people on the right do this with, like, well, Sharia law is based because you can take a child as a concubine and therefore, you know, <laughs> it's so weird. It's not... I, 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 I honestly, my, I mean... What are... <laughs> I, I Obviously, my, my dad is from a country which literally has Sharia law, right? Um, right. And even over there, um, I mean, I can tell you that um, I uh, I know people in my family who were like married at the age of thirteen and things like that. Correct. It's not it's not normal, right? I mean, my 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 grandmother um, was four foot ten, right? I'm convinced that she basically just had like stunted growth because she had kids too young. It's not really? it's not nor I, like it's um, how can I put this? Um, I on I see the practice as as savage in some way. It's not like based in trad. It's like de de civilizational or something, you know? Like a civilized people raise the age of consent. It's just a civilized thing to do, right? Um, do you disagree? No, not at all. I I, I, I mean, I, I, the idea of being married at 30, I don't think I started, sorry for being crude, I don't, I don't think I started my own period until I was 15. So if I got married at 12, I wouldn't have been sexually developed enough to I mean, yeah. do you see what I'm saying? It's just, um, it is a bit yeah. peculiar, isn't it? Yeah, I, I, but I also think as well that um, 
people in the West should 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 go by Western standards, and mm -hmm. the West was notable even as far back as like the 18th century. If you want to like read all the sources, for how, for treating women differently, not and not for you know and, and for viewing things like that as straightforwardly barbaric, and I, I and I just I don't think people should lose let's go of that as a basic value. You know, I know feminism is like bad, okay, but that doesn't mean that you should just like revert to a basic, mm. dis, you know, mistreatment of women and, um, you know, justification of paedophilia. Indeed, yes. So let's uh, let's carry on going. Um, when you offer some Nutella to your friend <laughs> and they don't want to use a spoon, I mean. Don't stick fuck? your finger inside. Mm. <laughs> this is some of the results that just came up. As I say, one account removes from mine uh, in the replies. So uh, again, it's not like I went looking for this. But yeah, and, I mean, you, and you, you click on these people and it's like, oh yeah, they're also following, you know, uh, mm. you know, uh, whoever, Louis Laval or Felix or, X, well, or whoever well, happens um, to be, you know. Or short fat otaku, is that you? <laughs> yeah. So I mean right. it's like right. it's like they're in our circles. It's not like them they're miles and miles away. These are like people who watch the same sorts yes. of videos or content or mm. you know, they're aware mm. of everybody in yes. these spheres. Although uh, that shouldn't I will be normal. The only it shouldn't be normal. The only thing I'll say is obviously I, I do recognize anime and lollycon or maybe categories I, i'm not you know i don't want to get in trouble by saying any of these people are into lolly i don't know if they are or not but let's face it it's all it's like uber weird and sexual isn't it the, the thing is though you watch a normal like a so-called normal rated anime or you're just watching the wrong stuff aa eh? you need to watch like fucking this one or that one <laughs> they all look they all fucking look like this anyway <laughs> Am I wrong? <laughs> no, you don't. No, you're not at all. No, no, yeah, yeah this no. one's got a really deep storyline. I mean, it's still a small <laughs> girl. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, there's what, what's the famous one? Is it Totoro or Totoro? Someone recommended me a couple of years back, so I watched it just to see. Oh, yeah, the, the protagonist was like this giant elephant rabbit thing, vegetable thing, and a little yeah, girl with I mean, a backpack that, on. That, that's the and I, I just... Did... That's the Studio Ghibli stuff. I mean, it's kind of like... All right. It's not for me, but whatever, I guess. But it's still very infantile. I mean, I would have watched it as a little girl, probably. But I don't really understand the regression to the, the infantile themes, if I'm Yeah, honest. I mean, I, I, I have a theory about this, which we can get get into if you want. I mean, I, I know I, yeah. I generally dislike psychologizing. But I do think that there is something that is leading young men or just just men in their 20s and 30s to do this sort of thing. Which is a kind of um, a kind of arrested development where they want to feel safe in some way, right? They want to feel like, uh, how can I say, safe for the responsibility of having to be a man, okay? Because being a man and being an adult man comes with a set of responsibilities and a set of kind of like, you know, real life challenges, and that is kind of burden, burdensome and it's um it's challenging and yes um in the modern world it feels like the chips are stacked against you as a man as well like you know, you know all the all the MGTOW stuff and the you know uh, divorce laws and feminism and all of these sorts of things so this regression is kind of like well what would the position be of somebody who's free of respons responsibilities um who who somebody who can feel safe and it's like well maybe the, the school girl in these in these mangas or whatever it's like a kind of weird safe like it's like a safe space if you want to put it that way mm -hmm. um and that and i i think that's why they lash out so wildly when when people like us are starting to attack this because it's their it's their sanctuary. They use this as a kind of fantasy sanctuary to get away from, you know, uh, all of the stuff that I just, you know, the real world, if you want. Um, but it's this weird, it's this kind of weird safe space where there's a confusion between 
whether they want to have sex with the little girl, right? Or mm -hmm. whether they want to be the little girl. Do you understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I, I think yes. there's different, like depending on who it is, the <laughs> emphasis may be in one way or the other. Do you agree with that or? Like I do. I mean, I, I think, as you say, look, anybody who's a lover of fiction who loves reading will know that the humans can absolutely feel a strong bond of kinship with fictional characters. You know, uh, when I was a teenager, I loved Holden Caulfield from Catcher in the Rye, like most teenage girls. Uh, you know, you, you can find a bond with people in Dickens or Dostoevsky, but... You know, these stories are packed with archetypes you feel connected to and maybe take solace and wisdom from their experiences or whatever. But I, I think when when the when this becomes maybe a sort of sexual object that it, it matters because I, what I see is a lot of men are sort of recentering their sexual desire from human to cartoon. And therein probably lies the step away from it just being a kind of sentimental bond that you feel with art or fiction it it seems to be um an actual development of a maybe an imagined relationship is developing as well so but and as for a childhood regression of course because it, the themes look very childlike and as a girl i'm a girl i love cute things i love peter rabbit and cute and girly flowers and things but even to me to look at some of it i would say that's not out of place you know on like a, a like a more of a cbbc type um mm -hmm. thing you know rather than even childlike it's it's more to toddler like does that make sense yeah i, I mean I, <laughs> I mentioned this as, i mentioned this as well though because i think that this is something that a lot of like i think it's something that even i struggle with to a certain extent you know i'm almost i'm gonna be 40 this year and hey, um, the big four oh nice you know but i still like seek refuge in like <laughs> mm -hmm. you know labyrinth and nintendo games and you know, pro wrestling from the eighties and things like that. And mm -hmm. I, I, you know, I think, um, I think men do tend to um, seek out their little kind of safe spaces, if you want, um, in that way. It's just kind of like a way of coping mm -hmm. with the world. Um, but I find it, I, I, because I understand how strong that kind of refuge place is. I mean, it's strong in me. Um, yeah. I worry that about it being this and then and the knock-on consequences of it being this in particular because um you know and i mean d d uh, like you're saying doa um you know these same people will be like pointing out like declining birth rates in the west and so on and yet they're spending all their time like you know in this in this fantasy thing. space falling in mm. love with little girls a cartoon little girl Yes. Um, all right. Uh, see. Well, uh, just on that, yeah. it, it, as for as for needing a um, a retreat or a kind of safe space, if you like, you know, Coleridge famously said he had the theory of the willing suspension of disbelief. And for anyone who's interested, there's actually a really great essay I read not so long ago. It's called Homo Ludens, which it's a Dutch um, philosopher called Johan Herzinga. And it's essentially about the importance of the play element in culture for adults. So it's talking mm -hmm. about basically how adults need this form of play as escapism. So whether that's reading or being kind of childish, like, you know, you, some adults like to still play a game of it in the summer. Um, yeah. it, I'm, I'm not certainly not denying that the play element of culture is, which you find in sport oft times and, and the camaraderie you find in watching sport. It, it, I think that it's that's less the problem for me um, because, as I mentioned, you know, I'm a lover of reading, as a lot of people are, but there seems to be a, more of a, this seems to be transpiring into more of a sentimental bond that men are actually developing maybe an imagined relationship with these characters that is making it difficult for them to, to find mm. relationships elsewhere or, or to establish one with a real woman. And, and okay, if, if you're okay with that, fair enough. But as I say, these men tend to be perpetually talking about demographics, but that they're in that they are almost exclusively in a world of of computer generated fantasy. So it, I'm just a little confused by that, I suppose. Yeah, um, I mean that, that that play element thing is interesting. Uh, we, we I'll send you the, the essay. Mm. We we mentioned the mid-century Germans earlier on. 
Um, <laughs> and what, one of the one of the elements of of them that has always interested me is the is actually those elements of uh, what I guess what you'd call play or like male bonding exercises or like there, there's a really strong emphasis on like um, how can I say like uh, doing like team sports and like yes outdoor yes. pursuits and things like that. Which, um, I mean, to like modern degenerate eyes, if you watch something like, I don't know, like Triumph of the Will, you like a lot of this is very like, I don't know, it looks kind of homoerotic to our eyes, but it, that's not really what's going on. They're, they're, they're trying to do some, they were trying to do something that was, um, like kind of, kind of wholesome, but also playing to that need for, you know, doing things that aren't always like, not everything can be like serious, I guess. Mm. You need to have like, you need to have these outlets for these things that we've been talking about, these play, I, I, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, so. Well, well, just as, just as the Greeks had theater, of course, tragedy and, mm -hmm. and theater. Um, that's absolutely integral. If you read Nietzsche's The Birth of Tragedy, it's, it's almost completely central to mm -hmm. being able to, 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 you know, to make a, a union of um, the chaos and, and uh, non-chaos, I guess, but, so, so I'm, I'm not against that. Let's, uh, let us carry on. Go on. Pill Eater says, the only real future is Eurasian futurism. Whites have failed to duplicate beauty. Their subculture can't compete with the alluring and natural good lifestyle of anime realism. No one likes the bourgeoisie. The bourgeoisie will morph into Eurasians. Mm. Someone actually sent me that screenshot. I don't know where it's from, but it... it I think it was from another conservative thread, but I just thought it was interesting that, yeah, failing failing to live up to anime realism was a bit of an unusual plot twist. <laughs> what 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 does that mean, anime realism? I'm not sure, but evidently there's a feeling that we fail to kind of be, uh, I suppose, a satisfactory in terms of beauty and the delivery that it gives them. I suppose. So what you want, what, like, I mean, in an ideal world, what what would this guy have you do? Like, kind of make your eyes kind of huge manga eyes and... <laughs> like an like an owl. <laughs> Imagine how I mean, your I... skull would have to. <laughs> okay. Uh, mm -hmm. Then, um, oh, God. Uh, looking for fertile lollies to breed. Ew. I mean, Ew. Uh... Just straight up pedophilia. Um, if, oh, there's my original you... tweet, look. If you're a man, oh, there he is. your avatar should not should be male, not a 12-year-old Japanese schoolgirl. Mine is a 15-year-old Gyuro ninja girl. By I the mean, way, I clicked you... on that guy's I clicked on that guy's account, and now he described himself as a patriot and um ex-army veteran. So like pretty butch guy. Um yeah, but American it's like, flag, like... What what are you doing, mate? Like big Trumper he was. Um but yeah. But this is, the, this is like whole... an actual vet this is somebody who looks like kind of don the pleb in real life but he's, <laughs> yeah. he's like um he he kind of like sucks on fisherman's friends and he likes you know um i don't know hunting and stuff but yeah but that that i mean i wish i'd found i wish i'd saved the unfortunately a lot of these people have made their accounts private now so i can't see them but uh, that whole thread was full of people like mine's an eight-year-old girl I'm glad that they privated their accounts. We we did that. Mm, yeah, we did that. I'm so get proud. Back, get, get back into get whatever back closet the, you came from. Get back, get back on the left nonce. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. It's fine. I wouldn't mind being abducted by you, Nishitaka. Oh. I mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean... <laughs> And here, yeah, because I thought, well, maybe it's like a kind of paternal instinct to protect, but then this word consent would imply, and that was retweeted by our friend Matrix. Oh, Matrix, yeah. mate, if you're in the chat, get your ass on here. I'd love to have him on for a chat. Matrix, I, I, I I'm not platforming any nonsense. I'm, I'm afraid. <laughs> I, I, I had to block him in the end. I just, I just can't oh, yeah, stand it. Longer. Mm -hmm. I think the, the the breaking point with for me was Ukraine, because uh, <laughs> yeah. Mm. He was on the other side of that issue as well. Oh, I uh, see, I see. Uh, here we go. Um, what? Okay. Oh, it was, West... it, it was yeah. it was a bottom one, but it was just in, it was more the fact, so this is Matrix's page as every other tweet is like some conservative, you know, like Thomas Sowell's tweets, which I know is a bit libertarian, but he'll, hmm. um, 
You see what I'm saying? It's a kind of weird yeah. union mm-hmm. between being a base conservative but also being like a loser. Yeah, but let's loser. just see what he's retweeting. Modern Western civilization is unique in respect for denouncing and not honoring its ancestors, which is ironic given that Western civilization has been the most successful in history. And then a real man would play as a female in any uh, any game. I mean, I, I'm completely against that as well. I've been playing video games since I was like four years old, and um, <laughs> I have never, I have never once deliberately chosen a, a woman to go. Um, yeah. Good. In fact, I've only well, played as a woman. You want to be Princess Peach? Um, I've only ever played as a woman. I did play pin, as Princess Peach in um, Super Mario Two, but there was a game a reason for that, which is that if you mm-hmm. if you hold the jump button in that. Uh, the princess can float along, and um, okay. you, you that actually like, need that. Sounds like that sounds like weep cope to me. AA, but... no, well, you actually need to float along in some levels. Um, okay. You know, so you have to pick between the four, like Mario, Luigi, Toad, and Princess. And... Oh, AA, listen to yourself, mate. Yes. <laughs> Get it out. Clear it. Clear it out. <laughs> <laughs> um, and the only other time I've ever played as a as a girl Dude. in a game was in there was a game called soul caliber um I tell you what if you look at some of the racks on and no, 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 never mind um in in soul caliber <laughs> <laughs> in soul caliber there was a character called huang right but then in, right. in later games they removed him um and <laughs> okay. there was a girl called zangua i think her name was zangua and okay. she had the same move set as huang so i was like a huang play- player and then i became a zangua player uh, right. And then I did. I then I ditched them and played as a. You sound like such a nerd. I played as Raphael, mm. the, the rapier guy. Is anyone still? Uh, is okay. anyone still just playing Oregon Trail? I mean, can we not get back to that? <laughs> Let's carry on. Shiro says, "Okay, here's a list of things I would do to her: lick her armpits, lick and smell her feet, lick her thighs, lick her ass, lick her hair, play with her wussy." I, I'm not. I can't. I'm not reading out the rest of that. I mean, just, I, I obviously chopped the photo off, but yeah, it's like naked young girls, flat-chested type, underage, prepubescent girl. Yeah. Was that retweeted by Matrix? I think that was. Yeah. Yeah. Matrix. Look. Yeah, look. Matrix. Yep. 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 Fucking just. And by the way, some of these tweets they've got hundreds of likes, thousands. It's not one or two. They're big accounts, you know. It's just disgusting. It's weird, oh, isn't it? Fucking hell. Jesus Christ. Mm. Fuck's sake. Yeah. I, I can't linger on that one. My, uh, my fantasy when I was seven. All odds are against us, lads. We shall hold no matter the cost. Let us die with honour and glory for something greater than ourselves. You know, that's something like Morgoth would, uh, you know. It's something uh, masculine, in, in, yeah. Endorse. It's masculine. Mm. Now, sort of based. Oh, big brother, please slow down. I'm losing feelings in my hips. I love you so much, brother. Give me your baby, please. I mean, what the fuck? Incest Why is this well. even a meme? Like, who is, who are these people? I don't know. It's they, self-confessed. Mm. They need to be rounded up. He needs, up have, he needs to have a word with his seven-year-old self, I'd say. They need to have, seven-year-old people self like this need to be beaten up in the streets. Uh, mm. Young men should coalesce into, um, into yes. flash mobs to <laughs> fucking hand down it's a bit gay isn't it he's stormtroopers you mean it, you know what I'm getting at. I get you yeah waffin brown shirts got it yeah there should be an anti there should be an anti we there should be an anti we battalion <laughs> oh dear anti we waffin who's joking I love it I want to have sex with a pokemon it's not a funny joke. It never will be. I mean, these are just ones I, I wish I could show you, like, you know. The, 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 <sighs> these are just They're the ones not real. that are clean. I know. I mean. Mm-hmm. That, that, by the way, that's that's the main cope on the nonce, nonce takers. Well, they're not real. And therefore, um, no, no child's getting hurt. Now, Okay, right, objectively, the character as a medium is not real. Okay, yes, it's a static two-dimensional fiction. But what matters, of course, is that you've essentially recentered your sexual desire to... It's real enough in your mind that you're losing, what is it Matrix said, litres of cum to watching it. 
Um, you see what I'm saying? Yeah. <clears throat> and the argument is like, oh, well, you know, it's not harming anyone. Why can't you let me be happy? Why should I let yes. you be happy? Why should I? No, you can't be. I won't allow it. You will. <laughs> exactly. Well, this question of happiness as well. Like, I, I can't answer for whether or not it makes people happy. But let's be honest. I, you must be depressed as hell if you live like that. Because, of course, it matters that if you've invested a kind of bond of either sexual desire or actual affection, which some of these people seem to do with their pillows and whatnot, in it, it's a medium that can never be reciprocal. So... Yes, that matters because th that's a remedy for a lonely life. Of course, it is. Um, you see what I'm saying? In fact, it reminds me. I, I had a little look at Roger Scruton's book on on sexual uh, human desire earlier. I didn't get time to look much, but one line that stuck out to me was this. He said, "The real evil of pornography lies not in its portrayal of other people as sexual objects, but in the radical decentering that it affects in the sexual feelings of the observer." So I think that's probably lends itself quite well here yes yeah absolutely um pedophilia is when the anime girl is short okay <laughs> i mean questions have to be asked about like why does matrix spend all day every day retweeting this shit yeah but it's, it's uh, his whole page is full of this absolutely chocker but the it. thing is right people can say oh well it's just one bloke it's not one bloke though this is just no. one that we've picked on but he's just like, he's one of many hundreds of these people. Um, and you don't have to look that far from them. They're lurking. No. They're probably sitting there watching this show right now. In amongst them. If you find they if read my comments, in the chat, for sure. If anybody in the chat right now, I can't see the chat. If anybody is trying mm -hmm. to stick up with this shit or play mm -hmm. it down, right? Don't play it down. Don't pretend like it's not a big deal. Don't pretend like it's none of our business. It is our fucking business. Especially if you're sitting there in my chat. You need to be hounded. These people need to be mm. hounded. They need Believed to, relentlessly and they viciously. Need to be ashamed. And they need to be told that mm. this is not acceptable. Mm. Their minds need to be cleansed of this fucking virus. Um, well, it, it, one of the other takes always, well, this is moral outrage. But then I often think, well, hang on a minute. What does it mean for something to be morally outrageous? That sounds quite meaningful. For it to be an outrage to the moral standard means it's probably fucking significant, isn't it? It, this is just radical individualists who don't care about um, the quality of, of the social order. I'm, I'm afraid your old... I, that was the kind of take I saw from your old... Um, you know, the old uh, the old gypsy that you used to hang around with. Uh, <laughs> well, I'm I'm very friend... I'm very fond with a V, and he's a friend of mine. But at least you can say a V. He likes anime, but at least he's married and functional. He's like, you know, he, he's not... I've never seen him share anything noncy either, so I'll, I will defend him on that point. But I see what you're saying. <laughs> um, American Revanche. Hmm. He retweets James Kirkpatrick. To be an yeah, American is, conservative, is, hmm. you need to believe that George Soros' influence in American elections is bad, but that spreading his influence across the world is a cause you should die for. Hmm. American Revanche, retweeting James Kirkpatrick. And yet, there he is, with a profile profile full of uh, full of this. That that is a classic example of all of these profiles. You know, it's like the IRL versus the Avatar. And it's like, well, <clears throat> now you've got now you've got this figure mm. um, preaching about American conservatism. <laughs> it's like, how does this yeah, happen? I mean, how did we how did this allow it how did this creep its way i mean this is left-wing stuff not come on no it's uh it's based in traditional and japanese based trash. <laughs> trash, Samur yeah. samurai culture <laughs> okay you know if uh fucking uh you know um uh it, you know if mishima was around today he'd be jacking off to this stuff you know <laughs> That show. <laughs> twat. Um, oh, this is this is one of the old-time. I mean, what is this? Oh, yeah. Egg count yes, over yes. time, right? So, the <laughs> idea here is that look, if you if you follow it, if you follow it back, mm. <laughs> peak egg count is like, you know, under the age mm. of ten. 
I mean, it's not even correct. I mean, does it? Can you not just make it eighteen? Like, do you have to go for a ten-year-old? I mean, the girl's perfectly fertile at eighteen, and she's legal. So, can we, you know, can we have some? It's very odd. By the so, way, yeah, I don't you know if, uh, if yeah, go on, go on. yeah, that, that was it for the images that I had. Um, <clears throat> that was a matrix. There are so many more, but I mean, they're not clean enough, are they? Uh, there was that one with the little girl, which just had a, the Pornhub T-shirt on, right? Oh, I mean, some. Of, I mean, that was that. I, I would say the things that we've shared are on the tamer end of what we've seen. Oh, of course, they're tip of the iceberg. I mean, I couldn't like, you know, I, I don't think I, even Susan, even with Jicky, right, is too prude. Basically, is too like too conservative. Mm. Susan with Jicky of Google is too conservative to allow this stuff on her platform. Um, mm. It's just it's just remarkable. Um, mm. Was there any other aspect of this you wanted to discuss before we uh, see what people are saying? DOA. Um, what else are we going to say? So we talked about the pedo surf. Oh, there was one thing I was thinking about. So <clears throat> I actually tried. To, hang on, two seconds. I need to cough. I've got a frog in my throat. Hang on. <clears throat> All right. So I, I I was thinking. I'll see if I can try find try and find any studies um, to actually see whether or not. See, every so we all know the, the famous uh, Samuel P. Huntington's Clash of Civilizations, right? Men who the, 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 <laughs> can yeah, you hear me so, okay? Yeah, yeah. Carry on. And I was wondering, maybe there's a sort of spirit. Uh, see, one of the things I've uh, I came across this. Do you know what I mean by the uncanny valley? Uh, yeah, I've, I, I've come across that. It's like a kind of, um, yeah. it's like an idea that they attach to uh, gothic, isn't it? Usually, usually. Like a kind um, of, uh, or like Southern sure Gothic that. fiction. Is that not? Uh, oh, I know what you mean. In literary criticism. No. Okay. So, yes. so Uncanny Valley, basically, it, it's a term that refers to the feeling of discomfort that humans feel around humanoids. So things that look like humans, but aren't. So dolls, um, mannequins, um, mm -hmm. animation. And when they mimic human-like features this can provoke people to feel uneasy. Do you know what I mean? So if you see people who see sex dolls, they feel that they're creepy, right? Mm -hmm. And the hypothesis of the uncanny valley is, it, it, for, basically, it's the, the valley occurs because the relationship between human and humanoid is not linear. So it's said that when, when the human detects a kind of likeness that's close to perfect in its physical form, but, but they can still tell it's a robot, there's this... Um, this curve that that develops a, a kind of depression in a valley-like shape, which is essentially a, a disgust response. Does that make sense? Um, I, I think it yeah, comes from yeah. the German um, Unheimlich, which is like uh, something that's yes. both familiar but also eerie. Yeah. Yes, yes, yeah. Like a mannequin, a mannequin. So mm -hmm. you get that kind of eerie feeling. So I, I found this study which was talking about this regarding animation as well and robots. And um, what it showed actually was very interestingly that the cultural attitude toward robots played a massive role in this. And they had both Japanese and European, I think in this study they were French participants. I can link it below, by the way. I'll do that later. Um, and the European participants, their, their valley curve of disgust response was much more significant in its depression than the Japanese one. And that's, you know, that's, I'm not hitting, hating on Japan by saying that. I'm, what I'm saying is that just a different kind of spiritual or cultural integration of robots and the inanimate object to the natural world seems to be much less of an issue there. And mm. I wonder whether this plays a role. I just saw this kind of interesting, I don't know if this plays a different, uh, plays a role in the, if you look at weebs in the West, like they are like, they do look like spiteful mutants, really, don't they? They don't look mm -hmm. like healthy, sort of usually kind of like fat retards. No offense to fat retards out there, but um, <laughs> the, 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 do you see what I'm saying? Whereas at least in Japan, like even if they have anime there, like, I don't know, men in their 20s seem to be businessmen making a lot of money. They, I, I mean, I, I will say that Japan you see what I'm is, saying? I, 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 mm -hmm. I will say though that Good. from my uh, knowledge of this issue, Japan right. is not an issue, is not a country without it, its own problems, okay? Mm -hmm. um, there's something in Japan known as the herbivore male. Have you heard of this? Oh, yes. I've heard the term, actually. Yes, I forgot about that. Go on. So, so, remind so me. There, there are 
a significant portion, and this is a prob. This is not a new problem. They were having this issue in the in the mid two thousands, right? Um, mm. And I think they're still having it now, which is basically the, the pressure on people to do well is so intense in Japan Interesting. that y- a lot of young men opt out. They don't <laughs> take on girlfriends. They're passive. They don't want to have a job. They spend all day playing video games. I mean, in this country, we just call them neat, neat, you know, N W E T S. Okay. Yeah. Um, was that not in educational employment? Um, is that right? Yeah. So, so they, they, they had this issue with a whole generation of men in Japan where the, the women were actually becoming like business executives and mm-hmm. becoming like kind of, um, you know, going into the world of work and becoming like professionals while a significant portion of young men were just opting out and becoming like kind of losers basically who spent all day yeah. like just just in their um if you can imagine like a man sitting in a bathrobe at like 4 p.m with yes, like half an, eaten, half an eaten pot noodle playing like <laughs> call of duty all day or something you know eating what's um, it so yeah I, I got i got you yeah yeah um so that, so that's one that's, that's one that's thing. tragic but okay yeah, mm. yeah. and the other thing I, I just mentioned pot noodles there um it's reminded me that there has always been this slight let's just say like perviness in japanese culture um i remember watching euro trash in the mid 90s okay um and i'll never forget it like euro trash event if people haven't seen it it was like kind of stories from all around the world and often they'd put like you know it'd be like um you know like a like a dutch prostitute or like a like a german um a weird German, like Leder Hose and Leather Man, but they'd stick like a <laughs> they'd stick like a kind of Liverpudlian accent on it, or you know, it'd be like a like a Northern accent. They stick oh, on can it. you it imagine? A, yeah. yeah, it's it's hilarious. But I, I always remember, accent. I always remember that the the weirdest and perviest stuff in Eurotrash um, was always from Japan, right? It was always like, oh yeah, in Japan they're into like you know. Um, a short little man like being trampled on by giant giant essays and things like this or <laughs> like um you know they're into like tentacle porn or like they're into well, that's like, notorious uh, isn't it mm. yeah you know but uh, anyway in one episode of Eurotrash, trash they um there was a significant portion of uh men on this kind of underground scene in tokyo who were taken to shagging pot noodles they, <laughs> Right, they, they they figured out right that they, they Wait, figured out with, that not not with boiling water. Come on, yeah, yeah. So you make the pot noodle. Oh. You let it cool. You let it cool Oosh. down a little bit, right? And you know, and they were saying, you know, you can imagine they've got like some like you know like Cockney or dirty Scouser accent overdubbing it, and it'd be like, oh yeah, the feeling of the pot noodle feels a lot <laughs> like a vagina, you know. And it's just like, well, like only in Japan, Is it? you know. So you see, you see a lot of this odd kind of pervery. And I actually think Jonathan Bowden talks about this in one of his lectures. Where I have to find that. But but Bowden um, has got this idea that energy in a in a culture can never be destroyed; it can only be pushed up or down. Right. Um, so, like in Victorian mm-hmm. culture, like um, on the surface, everything was very prim and proper and very very conservative in fact the victorians were notorious uh, prudes right mm. but if you go down into the underbelly of victorian culture yes there's yes. a lot of like weird cults and st- orgies and fucking mm. you know they quite a, yeah quite a there's a lot sex, of, underground sex trade didn't they th- or... there's a lot of like kink under the surface yes and, I, and, and, and so, so when he's outlining this bowden points to japan as a modern example of like well it's a very strict hierarchical culture um so some of those points that trads make are true like i I mean i remember i had a student who was uh staying in japan and i went to visit her um and she was complaining basically that you know even even in the world of work they still have like pretty strict gender roles and you know i was saying like women are going into the world of work but it's still like very male oriented Mm -hmm. oriented and you know they'd expect you to like go and make the coffee and you know keep your mouth shut and um like 
uh, I mean, w one of the other cultural differences out there is that people just stay in the same job for like 30 years plus. So the workforce is a lot older. Um, I mean, I'll give you an example. I mentioned Nintendo. I mean, I I, well, I remember gr growing up in the in the 80s and there was a guy called, um, you know, the guy who made Mario and Zelda. His name is Mi Miyamoto. Right. Miyamoto, okay. right? Like his course team is the same as the court, like they're just like old men now, right? But they're, they're still mm -hmm. there occupying the same jobs. So it takes a lot, there's a lot of um, dead men's shoes that goes on where in order to like get into certain positions, you literally have to wait for the previous generation to die off because they don't leave, they don't retire, they don't, they just st right. stick with it for a long, long time. And that creates a kind of, that creates a very different type of, like a kind of stasis in the culture, if that makes any sense. Um, mm. now, now, what Biden was saying is, is that because there is all of that in the mainstream culture, the energies, the de the degenerate energies, if you want, have to be pushed somewhere. So they're pushed down, or they're pushed like out into these kind of mm. weird spaces that we're that we are seeing, right? Um, and in a way, if it's kept like, how can I? In a way, the Victorian way of doing things is is preferable to what we've got now, where what we have now is all of the all of the spiteful mutants or all of the all of the freaks and degenerates are pushed front and center and they're mainstream, mm. and it's actually conservatives who are pushed underground. It's like we're the one, like it's like me and you are the ones who are worried about getting banned, you know. And these uh, these lolly freaks are the ones who are like pushed and you know. Um, or if you want to put it like the blue-haired feminist or the, you know... It's yeah, these the, are our version of the blue-haired feminist, isn't it? This is our version yeah. on the right. Yeah, so, so what I'm saying is like, you know, in a healthy society, you're, you're never going to eliminate this stuff that we're talking about entirely, no. but it's going to be pushed down. But that's not what we're... This stuff that we're looking at is not pushed down. It's being pushed front and centre. Like if yes. you're wearing it as an avatar you're not you're 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 making a declaration that that's your identity and you're wearing it loud and proud that's not being pushed mm -hmm. down or suppressed that's like the opposite of well, that at least that the victorians had a, sem a sort of so social semblance of shame you'd be embarrassed for people to know you did it even if on the fly you know you were uh, i don't know uh, trying to find a, a way of enjoying that fetish but uh yeah th there's no social shame but uh yeah you and i would be considered sort of you know overtly moral moral panic i think someone in the chat said earlier or or sort of overtly christian i think well what's wrong with that if you've got a problem with only fans girls because they're slags well can are we allowed to mention this then <laughs> it, it, it can't just be one way Yeah, I, I'm just having a look through the um, the comments on our original videos, DOA, to um, oh yeah, okay, to see if there's anything. But is there anything else you wanted to mention? Um, I mm, my, I guess the only other thing is this idea that hang on, let me just find the comment I had earlier, which was um, it, it, basically the anime supplies men something that m modern women don't, which is. Uh, yeah femininity and softness which i, I totally uh, respect the, uh, you know understand this male complaint about how maybe uh, modern women are, are you know have maybe sort of lost their way in this sense but then you know i also think some of these anime things don't even look like women you know, they've got like a, a turtle shell for a back and they've got antlers and a cat's tail do you know what i mean it's like it's basically it's bestiality isn't it though it's like oh i'm a little i'm a woodland critter do you see what I'm saying? <laughs> so either yeah. that's not true, or maybe you're like a bit of a closet into, you know, bestial. Do you see what I'm saying? There is that element too, which is why this is transhumanism. So it, it the tranny pipeline is there because, and also it actually is part of the great replacement theory. And funnily enough, the Reynold Camus essay does mention this at one point, which is the replacement of women with sex dolls and the replacement of men with sex toys. This is just another way of like, another part of that replacement process <clears throat> um so I, I don't know what to say of course western women can't compete with a cartoon because western men can't compete with sex toys but you know get over it 
stop watching it. End of story. You've got a responsibility and a duty as well. If you if you believe in civilizational continuity, just toughen up. Stop being a whiny bitch. There are some great comments in your in your comment section, by the way. Um, somebody saying that the, the, AQ, the AQ is just as important as the JQ. <laughs> are that they one. are they linked? I like that very much. I might put that on a t shirt. <laughs> um, um, mm -hmm. uh, there's there's a lot less pushback in your. Um, I thought there would be more, but I have had a lot of salt. There's a lot of salt. If you really spend time looking, did you say now get? Did you say now get out at the end? I missed that. <laughs> I did. That was a, that was a little tribute to you. But I won't do it again. Uh, don't worry. <laughs> um, must have missed that. It was uh, it was a good video though. I, I enjoyed. Yours so, was oh, a lot more. Here's one. Sorry, yeah, sorry. On. This is this is it. It's like women want to shut anime down due to jealousy. So that's a comment that I had repeatedly. Um, well, uh, here's the question: If women feel jealous about your time and affection going into anime. Don't they have a point? I mean, why, why do you feel smug about that? It's an interesting take, isn't it? Men seem to feel very, or these weep men seem to feel very delighted to know that women feel unhappy with it. Maybe they've got a point though. Like, uh, why would your wife want to know that, you know, your lust is being invested into something that she can't ever replicate? It's hard enough to live up to a porn star, you know? So how, you see what I'm saying? I, I found one on yours. Go on. Lux et Lex. Right. Should I, I, I might share my, I might share my screen. <laughs> Please read it. Make me laugh. Let me just share, share my screen. Now. Cooming of any sort is bad. That much should be obvious to any Christian. And there is nothing sure, but... wrong with that message. However, I found the idea that single weebs that coom to hentai, including right wing ones, are obsessed with the second realm, that they no longer want a real girl, rather absurd. Many dev devote themselves to a waifu with merchandise because no women seem to be interested in them. You make the <sighs> modern dating scene sound rather easy to navigate in this video, which is obviously false. Many of these men are not going to be competitive when all the problems with modern dating and female hypergamy exist. To borrow a term I hear the Red Hawk use, these men are the beta buck side of things. They really are perfectly willing to spend a lot on their love interests, as can be seen from their spending. However, they have no one to spend it on, so anime will do, to which you've just replied. <laughs> 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 anime PFP. <laughs> and then they've come back with... <laughs> they've come back with bunny PFP and, you know... Oh, this wow. guy, right, um, right, no, this guy, this guy, <laughs> Melfis, right? He, mm. right, I've got one of him on mine. Let me let me show you. He he's a <laughs> recurring character. Yeah, let me, let me, let me, yeah. By the way, you've got nothing to spend it on me. I'll be your love interest. Yeah. Why didn't you send for DOA? She's a real girl. Send like, it my like way. A I'm, real a real <laughs> I'm a real girl. I'm a real girl. Melfeast999, who was just in cool. DOA's uh, thing. This is on my video now. Okay, AA. <laughs> Do start to use your real face and name on the internet then. This is what you're advocating right now because I can't just be an anon on the internet with a cartoon for an avatar, Lamau. To which I've replied, just don't be a little girl, you nonce. <laughs> right. And then this guy comes back, says, You sound like you're running out of testosterone, not gonna lie. Raven. What? So what you're basically saying is as insignificant as a small picture on the internet is supposed to represent us. So it's basically you screaming, respect my pronouns, look how I represent myself, stroke my ego. Maybe you're the creepy one for putting so much importance on a picture. <laughs> Listen, you fucking twat. Someone Stop here, putting really. little girls as your profile picture. I mean, it's not difficult. It's not I don't complex. know. I don't know. Look how angry they are, though. Look how angry they are. It's just a picture, bro. It's just a picture. Yeah, but you're cooming over it, nonce. <laughs> I mean, Isn't it, it? I, I, I think it's a... You see, I think there's a... I think they're obviously very strongly emotion emotionally attached to these little girls to get as angry as they do. Oh, Melfis is in the chat. Hey, hey, Melfis nine nine nine. Right, but, yeah, I'm going to look um... for some more. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm back in your comments. Hang on. I, I, well, there's one. There's one from a one whose anime was in pink. Hang on. Let me see if I can find it because you'll you'll love this. Mm, my friend shared it on their polling the polling station. <laughs> 
Oh dear. Um, oh, here we are. Do you want to hear it? Should I read this one? Yeah, go on. Um, what I love about cute anime girls is that they make Thought's hamster wheel go round at the speed of light. The jealousy is palpable. She thinks, how can he prefer a 2D girl to me? Because a life of male supplication has given her the vanity of believing she is perfect. The thing is, why would I place any credence in the opinions of a dried up old hag who can't even hold a candle to a drawing? It's hilarious. No amount of seething is going to change the fact you're, you're so unappealing that a cartoon is better than you on every level. Actually, it only widens the distance between the two of you. Me, you don't have to sleep with me. I am a hag. Go find yourself a cutie. You can get a real girl. <laughs> I mean, I. So, so their take is any, any women. Woman women don't hold about... a. Women don't. Women don't live up to anime. Basically, I don't no. know how we would though. I mean, that is a bit of a problem if that's what men think, because there's no way even really hot women can't do that. You just don't look like that. <laughs> I just find that like the, what the line of attack is very interesting though because <clears throat> they have to like this is just a variation on a liberal argument I see a lot which is um, the problem is you if you've got a problem with this it's a you problem right but this is I just have one got of a problem with it <laughs> <clears throat> this is just one of the stages of cope right it's just one of the stages of cope mm -hmm. um, and and if you know I, I once made a meme of the, like the stages of cope. And the next level on from uh, this is a you problem, okay, is um, actually it's here and it's not a problem and that's a good thing, right? That's the next one on. So why don't you just own it, these people? Why don't they just like, um, rather than lash out and try to attack us, why don't they defend the fact that they're obsessed with underage girls? Mm -hmm. that, that That's, that's the thing that... You know. Then they're not real, bro. What's, what, what are you ashamed of then? Own it. So, um, <clears throat> yeah. I have to say Dark that you're, I'm, I'm quite pleased to see that, uh, I mean, obviously we're picking up on the defenders, but there are lots of people in both of our comment sections, but in yours in particular. Mm -hmm. um, it's kind of interesting reading a girl's, uh, like reading a girl's comment section. They're so simpy. <laughs> DOA. It's fucking ridiculous. I love it. I, I love mean, it. Tell you what, if you ever want an ego boost. <laughs> I mean, this would this would be like reading through one of my one of my comment sections, just be like, hey, yeah, yeah, I think it's so great. This is just an amazing video. You're just my like my hero. You know, it's just like it's just, um, I get I get some hard ones too, but I must say, uh, tell you what, um, you come away with a real confidence boost after you read They're the so sometimes. polite to you. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I love, so I love, I go. love my, I love my orbiters. Is this woman splaining? Oh. Sounds like cope, says <laughs> says somebody. I suppose um, it is woman splaining. So, so there we go. I mean, I, I did see a lot. I do see a lot of that kind of reflexive. Oh, because it's a woman saying it, um, mm -hmm. therefore it's invalid. But like, well, this is not just a woman I'm, saying I'm, it. And aren't men aren't men interested in women like don't you want to attract women and if a, if women are saying hey this is really off-putting isn't that that's like me saying well men who think only fans girls are off-putting the problem's them like no just just take the advice and learn from it maybe but this is not just like doa saying it i mean <clears throat> i'm saying it uh there are loads of other people i've seen around in the comments like i saw i hypocrite down there um yes. And Devon, you know, uh, Devon, Devon, Devon Stack, Devon, like Pimp. Devon Stack, uh, is with us. You know, he absolutely um, hates anime, so far as I'm told. So that's based. You know, so um, there's a, it's it's not just like what I'm saying is that these every single one of these personal attacks is just a is kind of a, a reflexive lash out and a cope basically to try to defend something that mm -hmm. is completely undefendable. Um, much. What I'm really perturbed by is the number of people who were subscribed both to me and this Hero High fellow um, who made the original there. Like, why is anybody subscribed to both me and that guy? Did, did you hear him? He was like a kind of yeah. Yeah. San Francisco, like, saw, like, I know he did like a funny voice at the start and then he went <laughs> into his normal voice, but his normal voice was 
I mean, yeah. you know, the the voice of a the voice of somebody who you'd imagine goes team building in um, <laughs> you know in, in, in Silicon Valley or something. He wears yeah. a lanyard at work. Is that what you mean? <clears throat> yeah, I mean, he was just yeah. like. I don't want to be in the same like Venn diagram as that guy. So um... oh, I quite, well, I, this is what I said about followers on Twitter. I was thinking, hang on a minute, are we either they were directly following or one removed? I'm not happy with that. As much as yeah, I no. love your channel, AA, Hero High is the wrong guy to try to dunk on here. He's usually the voice of reason and laughs at far left weirdos and their bad taste. What? No, 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 no. We didn't reach he, out to him. He's not. <laughs> He, he is like I'm not. I'm not willing to be part of a universe where that dude is part of the same like <laughs> same like circles as us. He's fucking not. He is the far left weirdo, Mike Q. You should unsub from me if you have to pick. Fucking just unsub from me and go go and watch that guy instead. I'm not. I'm not willing to be part of that. Um, I love it. So. So uh, there we go. There's, there should um, be no. There should be no crossover. There has to be an absolute zero to tolerance policy. Zero no tolerance. More no more libertarianism either. I don't care if it's free speech. It's nonsensory. Matrix. Oh, there's Matrix. Look, there's Matrix. Is he in chat? No, no, he's he in, he's in my comment. Uh, he's in my comment two weeks ago. Um, <clears throat> now all there is left for you to say: muting this thread in cells mad. So that that was his comment. So there we go. Mm, right. Mm, hot take. Um, I, I do find it bizarre that the original video thought I was attacking him from the left. Um, like, did you find any of that, that this claim that it's like wokesters who attack anime for being Peter? Like, I, I didn't really see, I've only been told about this, but I haven't seen much evidence. Um, I did find one article on Salon about how the Japanese government... Like people in Japan want to ban underage uh, hentai, but for some reason the Japanese oh. government never actually moves on it, and like this is a problem. Um, I mean, based yeah, salon, was that, sorry, was that, I mean, was was that written by a Western um, author? Was it or a journalist? It was written, yeah, it was but it was written, like obviously, yeah. like it was a it was a left winger, is what they're saying. I mean, I like, I, I know I, I'm pretty sure they have a diff. I I understand they probably have a different relationship with in terms of sex sexual desire to us maybe but then that's why it doesn't translate very well into western culture i don't think making a mess of people over here isn't it aa doesn't know what he's asking for wanting to see our real faces instead also well, don't, don't be scared by this comment i don't want to sleep with yeah but how about like that's a false dichotomy isn't it i'm not saying dox yourself and show your real face I'm just saying, like, out of all the images in the world, maybe don't cho choose the prepubescent, you know, schoolgirl to represent mm -hmm. you. What? Why? Like, why not just choose, you know, a man, for example, or anything mm -hmm. else? You know, I chose Roland Rat on Twitter. Like, Roland Rat is a kind of inoffensive, <laughs> inoffensive character from the eighties. You know, you don't, you don't have to. Uh, it's it's the specific uh, paedophilic element that that we're and it's very here. common. It's very common. Who who is the character you're going to show us though? Uh, the one with the big ass and the thighs. Oh oh right okay. <laughs> I just want to see it for the fun. Oh my god! Right, let me, let me just pull it. This is so oh, in the um. um in the um, 90s, there was a game called Street Fighter 2, which was absolutely huge. Um, and a character, a female character in that was called Chung Li. Okay. Um, <laughs> now, unbeknownst to me, somehow during our little exploration of this, I discovered the fact that there is a massive scene of um, dedicated to Chung Li's thighs. <laughs> <laughs> Let me just share my uh... show. Show us, and it's a this big is... scene, as you said. Yeah, it's a, it's a huge scene. Uh, Chung Li thighs. So as you can see, there are girls who dress up as Chung Li. There are um, there are lots of fan arts of Ch Chung Li. 
Um, uh, I discovered all sorts of things. Look, there's there's another real life Chung Lee. Look at her. Look at her. There's a look, fan art of fan art mm. of Chung Lee. Can you see uh, her massive, Chung. massive thighs? Um, I discovered so much about this Chung Lee scene because I mean, there's another real life Chung Lee. Look, look at her. Oh, bloody hell! How the hell does this she? Is, is that real? Yeah. Lord above. Didn't you find uh, like a disabled like Chung Lee fetish thread as well? So well, I find like, that there's basically like there's basically like three variants of this Chung Lee thigh business. Okay, mm. there's the very muscly Chung Lee, as you can see here. <clears throat> yes, yeah. The extreme muscled up Chung Lee, and then like real women try to try to muscle up like the real like like that Chung Lee. Oh, look at then, that one there! Go down yeah, and this one. Yeah, oh, you. Uh... Yeah. Abs as well. Fucking so, hell. so that, that's one variant of the Chung Lee. There's another one. Look, mm -hmm. um, then there's um, like fat Chung Lee, <laughs> where they've made <laughs> her like really sick. fat, and she's kind of like feeder sure feeder Chung Lee, you know. Um, and then <laughs> there's just us. like, and then there's like normal Chung Lee. Let me just find. And this is just one. This is one like tiny, tiny little subculture, but it's actually really oh. quite big. And what I'm saying is, like, don't tell me, right, when, when, I mean, I don't know, what, what would it take for a, for a woman to develop her thighs, like, how many squats, how many, like, real man hours or woman hours did it take for these Jesus. women to transform themselves into... I haven't seen looks looking, like that on a man. Mm. Right, looking like Chung Lee, okay. Don't tell me that this doesn't have a real world effect. That it's just online. That's just on the internet, because w otherwise, how do you explain this, right? How do you explain the sheer number of women who are doing? Oh, look, look there's Chungus. There's the Chungus. Uh, see that Chunky. one? Oh, she's a big lass, isn't she? She's black that's, that's as well, fat, half black. That's the that, 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 fat Chungly. Look. <laughs> <laughs> well, didn't you see? Wasn't there a comic on with somebody dressed up and they padded out their ass at the? Oh, look, look, there's another what one. Call it? I mean, Jesus what Christ, look at that. That's a woman. That's a Chinese, That's a chi Chinese doctor perfectly resembles. Fuck me. Right, I mean, and this is just like, into that. Look, I mean, you know, mm. um, I mean, there, there's, there's just an absolute... Sorry, master. Look, there's, there's, there's tr another Chungus. Uh, this is the fat, the fat variant. You can see her. <laughs> I don't like uh, it. It's so uncanny. It's uncanny look, valley. Look, look at the, look at the, look at the like, you mm. can't tell me that the that the this that that all of these women in real life wouldn't be trying to chunk up their thighs if this didn't work. If this didn't exist, there is a clear causal relationship. What I'm saying is, you know, because when you start to point these things out. People are like, oh, yeah, this is the same as saying, um, you know, um, uh, video games cause violence. Culture absolutely affects be people's behavior in real life. And what and what goes on in these subcultures is clearly having an impact on these women. These are. Oh, look, there's another there's another fat Chung Lee. Look. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Crikey, um, she looks like she's been stung by a hornet's nest. I can't find the the, the uh the big ass Chung Lee. Um uh, there was the one at the, uh, the conference we were laughing at. Ooh, booty. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, look at Commission. See, this is another thing I saw. Oh, there she is. Look, there she is. There's the one at the conference. How many accounts take? Oh, there she is. She's got a big old butt on her. <laughs> how many how many simps do you think she had at the um at, at the, the conference, conference maybe, yeah. Maybe I'll uh, start doing me, IRLs like that. Let me just have a look. Uh, Chung Lee cosplay. I mean, it, this is an enormous thing. I can't. And this is just cosplay. like so. This cringe. is just one tiny little node of this, right? It's just yes, one it tiny, tiny little tiny. thing. Uh, and yet, mm -hmm. you know, I can scroll indefinitely to find real life women who have done everything they can to make themselves look like Chung Lee. I mean, I reckon I could scroll for the next like five mm -hmm. minutes. And keep on finding women dressed up as Chung Lee. Mm -hmm. So don't tell me it doesn't have a real world effect. This is clearly a real thing. It's clearly like having an effect on all of these on all of these different people. I um, wonder if cosplay and, cosplay that's 
popular with women seems to, I don't know whether it's a case of them well, trying to to generate um look at this one. Well, just desire from men I guess look, oh, look, look at this wow. um you know in written like you, you have a look at her and she's just just a pretty face <laughs> but under the surface yeah. oh there she is she's fucking stacked look I mean you you would lose it uh, she's a very pretty woman as well but yeah yeah she's very well. very pretty but also built mm. like a fucking brick shitter so you know. <laughs> And they're and they're and they're massive, <laughs> this massive is what I mean thighs. about this is what I mean about transhumanism. It's like, oh yeah, she's fit, but she's also oh, like, there she is. I look, know, she's got the just, just, the body just of working out to look more like Chung Lee. Oh, and uh, here we are. Here's a man who's dressed up as Chung Lee as well. Absolutely. So here's Chung Lee idol... with a Chung Lee bitch boyfriend as well. Oh, it's, it's always a white man as well with an Asian loser. So there we go. And it, so this go. is a thing where I think people get a bit carried away with like, oh, base China, base China, base China. This um, this whole like Chung Li scene seems to be quite localized to there's a lot of because Chung Li herself was a Chinese character. This is a very big mm -hmm. scene in China. Um, right. Right. And it's I mean, it's straightforwardly degenerate. And this is this, I would say, is an <laughs> example of right. Now, this is going to sound like strange, but. I discovered that Chung Lee, who was who was made up by the uh, the games the Japanese games developer of Street Fighter, right? Um, right? Apparently, the original designer back in 1991 has has a thigh. He basically created Chung Lee to have big <laughs> mega thighs because he has got a thigh fetish, right? He has got <laughs> a he has got a sexual fetish for thighs, right? Okay. OK, so he put that in the computer game and now 30 years later, it's it's a it's a it's its own kind of. I mean, know, but they're not uh, even they're not like thighs as in like firm. Like I can understand men liking nice thighs, but they're like a man's they're like a, I don't know, world's strongest man or something. Yeah. I mean, you know, significant Chung Lee thighs. OK, um, <laughs> what I'm saying is, though. This is an example of right Japanese degeneracy basically corrupting <clears throat> China. It's moved from Japan to China, supposedly based China, mm -hmm. and now like Chinese girls are making themselves like this, you see? And so I it's like it. there's no what I'm trying to say is there's no Western element in here. Street Fighter was a Japanese game, it's moved from Japan to China. There's no like Western Western element of this. They've done it all themselves. Mm -hmm. So it, it's but like they're based this idea in, but that, they're based in trad, aren't they? Yeah, this idea that nothing wrong can come from. Do the they East. have vending machines with like little girls' panties and stuff, or is that a meme? I don't know. Look, look, look at this, Diam. Those are some thick, muscular legs. You must put steroid. Look, there, there's all <laughs> sorts of. Like, who is this meant to represent? <clears throat> who are these little? Who are the little simps next to the, you know, it comes back to my original, my the original simps. point about, you know, who mm -hmm. is the little, the little frog man there. <laughs> I, I, you, <laughs> know, man. you understand what I'm saying, though, right? Because, again, yep. you're putting the, yep. the, there's so many strange elements to this. It's not just transhumanism yes, right. well, and this transgenderism. Is why I said, um... mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It, it, it's putting, it's putting men into feminine positions and and women into male positions and this yes. is being allowed by the fact that this is all this is all virtual of course it's all mm -hmm. it's all fantasy and make-believe but it's like the fantasy is always of this strange role reversal where mm -hmm. you're making you know you're making the woman butcher and you're making the the man gayer and Weirder, the only and, you know. the only form that's where the girl actually seems feminine is the lolly stuff where she's a little girl. Everything else is like oh, there's a weird warp. This is why I said transhumanism and also uncanny valley because maybe it's just me, but I have a disgust response to it. And I've heard that more conservative people have a higher, oh, sorry, lower threshold with disgust. But it just makes me I feel weird when I look at it. I mean, I, I one I of like my it. favorite things that I found when I was uh, looking into this, was um, there was one Chung Lee cosplayer who's actually mastered oh. the spinning bird kick. I don't know if you ever played Street Fighter 2 VOA, but... Um, no. 
Um, what is well, it? Chung, Chung Lee could um, basically do this helicopter kick where she <laughs> she she do the splits <laughs> upside down. Right, she'd mm. do the splits upside down, and she'd um, oh. basically like go across the screen as a helicopter, like a rotor, imagine. like a rotor blade. Oh, like right. a rotor blade. Yeah, it was called no the spinning bird. Thighs kit. strong. Right. Uh, yeah, very strong thighs, obviously. Um, and I found one of these cosplayers can actually do the spinning bird kick in real life. Let's see if I can find. Really? Fuck it. That's yeah, literally, like, like she can... literally an attack helicopter. Don't yeah, I mean, like she can't, I mean, that's pretty can't, impressive. She can't obviously can't travel across the screen, but she can do like the. <laughs> She right. can do like the main part of the spinning bird kick. So you can see if we can find That's that. That's kind of oh. impressive. So um yeah. Oh look, there's a there's a fat one. There's a fat one. Oh, there's, I love a fat, a fat one. Chung... I love it. But in America, there's always a chunk. It doesn't look good on us. Yeah, I, I did notice that the the um the Chinese Chung Li cosplayers tend to go for the muscle legs, whereas the Western Chung Li con <laughs> yeah, the there's a reason for that. Go, they tend to yeah, go for the chunk, effort. you know. <laughs> <laughs> you got to work with what you got here. Look, look at this. It's look at this. Look at this one. Conducive to the culture. <laughs> oh, She's... fucking hell! She looks like a right mong as well, though. I mean, you look like an idiot. Is is? Am I being un, am I being unfair? Oh, I wish I could find that one who was doing the spinning bird kick. It <clears> was oh, please, just a... please try and find it. Oh look, there's another trungus one. Look, uh... is that front or back? Mm -hmm. Um to be fair, these aren't these aren't half as bad as oh look, is that a guy there and that's the little sailor outfit? No, Men in cosplay are the most hilarious. Oh, okay. I did I did find quite a few. Oh, there she is. There she is doing the, the, the oh. there's the oh, yeah. Kit. Yeah. Hey, that's quite um, impressive as a gymnastic move. Yeah. <laughs> Deep on deviant art. <laughs> she's um I mean she's some some Chung Lee cosplayers put their levels into the thighs. Some put it mm -hmm. into chunking up, right? Um, fat, and, and others Feeding. put it into mastering the spinning bird kick. You know, so imagine having uh, all three. That's like the perfect Chung Lee. Yep. So um, mm -hmm. there, there we go. Um, oh look, there you go. She, she's actually a wrestler, though. To be fair. Um, <laughs> <sighs> We'll never. I mean, I could. I reckon I can scroll for the next <laughs> ten minutes and never reach the end of the Chung Lee, um, the Chung Lee, um, uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, rabbit hole. Okay, <laughs> it's kind of fascinating. Shall we uh, hit some super chats? Let's do it. Narco Republican says lolly batarians must be physically removed. Yeah, I mean. This is why I always said that I was into Austrian economics and was not a libertarian because so many people become libertarians because they want to legalize weed or, you know, they've got some like weird thing they want to protect. Um, uh, and, and this was ultimately what led to me um, falling out with people like the Britisher uh, DOA over time was mm. because... British show on things like free speech doesn't have a limit. Like there's no line to to where like he doesn't draw a line anywhere, including. I think pedo they see stuff. it as, as as radical, but I just think, well, actually, is it conducive to a, a society with standards? Imagine how much better things would be if you could just ban the like the people pushing for um, kids having tranny pills. Everything would be immediately better. Why wouldn't I mean, you censor that? But I do, I mean, I think there is a obvious societal harm done by this sort of stuff um, that, that we've been talking about. It's obviously not good. It's obviously not healthy. Mm -hmm. And it obviously contributes to, um, you know, societal decline. Uh, so why, like, why should you tolerate it? Why would a healthy society uh, let these things go? I mean, I, I, I think there's such a thing as, like, societal antibodies. And I see me and you, our role in a way as being the <laughs> the antibodies of of, a, of a society. We're like the academic white, antibody, the white blood cells. You know, <laughs> I love it. Uh, Jacob says, mm -hmm. "For the final fucking time, you worthless libertine vermin! Free speech is for <laughs> criticizing the government, not 120 days of Sodom garbage. Porn is not speech. I need more ammo." 
Thank you, Jacob. Um, Adam E says, I wonder if this situation is related to the phenomenon of Zuma women being snatched up by older men. Zuma men cannot compete with that, so they go for kids instead. Society as a whole is beyond the pale, and it's starting to snowball towards hell. Yeah, I mean, this is something that I've heard people talk about before. And the idea that men and women should be the same age when they go out is actually a fairly recent thing. Um, mm -hmm. You know, as, as, as recently as um, the boomer generation, it was the norm for the gap between men and women to be, what, what did they say? Was it like Tense. half your age? Was it half, half your age, age plus, plus seven. seven? Plus seven? Yeah. That's right. That's how you establish. That was always how you, at school, you you'd establish how much younger than you you should go. So be half your age plus seven. Yeah. Right, but obviously, mm -hmm. like if you're eighteen, you can't. You can't. No, I mean consensual. You know, legally. Yeah, it has to be consensual. Mm -hmm. That doesn't like that's not an argument Legal. for paedophilia. But, no, no, uh, no, no. But th this, I I think one of the consequences of egalitarianism has been this idea that you should date men your old like men should date women their own age um but that has historically not been the norm uh really until our generation until like, i i think my generation was really the first i'd say it's batch, it feels more, it feels more natural i would say it feels more natural to date older men as a woman and then vice versa just as long as they're not kids that's the thing just yeah just no nonsense. I mean, I, I, I've always been swings and roundabouts on this because, like, if I applied that rule and I went out with a 27-year-old, what would we talk they, about? What, what would we talk about? I don't know if you'd be talking, though. <laughs> I mean, yeah, but, <laughs> like, can she name the Ghostbusters? Um, is she, like, I, <laughs> I, I don't have... Um, I don't know. I, like I, I struggle when somebody doesn't have the same like reference mm -hmm. cultural reference points as I do. But then maybe that's a very modern mm -hmm. frame, like imagining that this person has to also be my friend or in some way, not my uh, I don't know. not my romantic not my romantic interest. If that makes any sense, like the idea that oh, as well as being um, uh -huh. you know man and woman, you're also like best buddies or something maybe this is also like a quite a modern idea i, I don't know yeah, maybe. You think? i like the idea of being a, a best buddy but uh yeah i don't but, see why they have to be the same age as you of course not um johannes says we deserve hellfire don't we sex is where the west is the most messed up yes um i mean the the, the thing is the thing is, though, right, if we can't weed this shit out of our own spaces, what hope is there of doing it, like, more more widely? Like, we have to we have to be, like, non-tolerant of this sort of stuff. And if you have a friend in the chats or in the discords or wherever you hang out, you shouldn't be tolerant of this. You should hound them until they drop it. Uh, do you agree with that, do you, mm -hmm. I mean, I, I think, like, yes, inter really. where, where this stuff is required intervention and like uh punishment until you were like reform yourself is required yeah look i'm not obviously i'm not saying that you should ridicule people if there are maybe men who are lonely and they go to this for solace but i guess just more on a superficial level it did the same way that men like to bully women online with only fans right <laughs> which is fair enough i think you should tease them at least and make it kind of socially embarrassing to have these pfbs yeah um hugh james says what's more cringe watching the odd bit of anime or being dicky spencer and unironically putting the eu flag in your twitter bio because of ukraine uh i mean the, I, I, the think latter. <laughs> I, I think it's straightforwardly anime but you're you're saying dicky spencer um no i'm only kidding i'm only kidding the eu flag actually but I, I mean, we're, we're going to be reviewing the Dickie Spencer versus Joel Davis uh, debate on Wednesday. I thought you um, might be watching that. Mm. 
yeah the one it was last night wasn't it it was last night yeah i um i couldn't concentrate and had to watch it again this morning so i i actually think that he made a lot of very interesting points um but we'll get into that yeah we'll get into that on wednesday um i mean i was doing a bit of trolling in the chat saying i love dickie spencer and all that sort of stuff but they always (laughs) they always always bite and they always bite i saw morgoth share that (laughs) Um, uh, aristocratic owl says once made fun of a trad friend for jacking off to 18th century realist art of women honestly i've never understood why men today (laughs) honestly i never understood why men today Mm. i never understood why men today end up jacking off to feminine art these days so there we go i mean just get a girlfriend. Do it with her. Just have normal sex with a person. Legally and consensually. End of. Okay, I'll continue. I mean, what, what about the argument, though, that a lot of these people have been coming up with? That it's not as easy as that, DOA. You know, Co- it may be easy for you to say, but you've literally got, like, thousands of simps. Um, you know, and you're a woman, and you can snap your fingers and have your, like, your pick of ten men. Um, what about these guys who are like literally like gamma males to use Vox Day's sexual hierarchy? They're not going to be looked at twice in a million years, even by like three out of ten girls. So they have like Aww. no choice but to jack off into their socks watching um, <laughs> anime it. porn. Well, what about that argument? For... Though, because okay, that's fair enough. That's a fair argument. Um, honestly, I, I think I really women do not care about as we do care about looks obviously we don't want to go with a minger but as long as you're not like grotesquely obese or anything you're absolutely fine if you can be affable and have a sense of humor like you're a decent lad you know you'll find someone nice just have a little bit of self-confidence and self-esteem um and actually yeah the idea that simps girls like me will have the sim imagine the kind of things i get in my inbox like show us your feet doa you see what I'm saying? Plus, these people, they they think they're in love with how I am online, but they don't really know. They don't really know me as Sarah, do they? So, um, see what I'm saying? So, in a strange way, they... you're, in a strange way, mm-hmm. even like in those spaces, your the idea of DOA in it in itself is a fantasy. Of course, in a, in a strange way, yeah. Um, of course. Um... But but I will say you know, maybe there comes a point where I do see this a lot, and I think men just maybe just need to. I know it's tough out there, and and the morale is low, but just just try and try not to become too, you develop too much of this victimhood complex because it is it's like pretty rife at the moment. You know, our men are good looking, white men are gorgeous. I mean, of course you'll find yourself a honey. Just um, you know, wear yeah, some I mean, nice clothes, is... make a the, laugh. The... This is why I don't, this is why I don't, um, um, people like wonder, like, what, how do you allow guys like Red Hawk into these circles? Like, he's not like, he's not very <laughs> trad. And so, but I I think as long as this, as long as this phenomenon exists, there is a kind of inherent, not so much the pick up, you know, fuck em and truck em stuff that Red Hawk gets into, but the... Mm the kind of building self-confidence and just having the ability to, um, you know, just have the self-esteem to be able to approach women, basically. Um, I think that is a step in, like, that's a good thing for our guys, in my view. Yes. Um, I like Red Hawk. Mm. Yeah, you don't, but you don't have to take, like, all right, maybe Red, you don't have to take the spinning plates thing. Just having the (laughs) courage, just, like, getting to the point where, you yes. you turn your life around enough to get a girl is enough, I would say. But at least know. at least he knows what he wants and he's confident. And I, I've spoken to him before, and he's actually quite a gentleman. He's not. He's some of the kind of like oh, based on red pilled men can be real. They are pigs, and they're you know, like shut it, um, slag type type men, which which you know, is fine. But you'll never attract a girlfriend like that, of course. But um, I like I like Red Hawk. He's he's all oh right. yeah. And, but what you've just revealed there is that Red Hawk chat. is slick. Red Hawk has slid into your DMs. At some uh, I said that I'd spoken to him before. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> there is no sliding. All right, I see. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, El Sidley. <laughs> El Sidley. Stop it. Or, 
making Sorry, me blush I'm here. I'm just winding you up. Um, <laughs> uh, hold on. Um, Flat Mouse says, look up Proteus effect. It's basically a research field looking into whether or not your PFP influences your character and behaviors. It does. Mm -hmm. And it does. Of course it does. It's a, it's a virtual representation of yourself. Of course it's going to affect, you know, affect how you look. I mean, let, let's have a look at some of my avatars here. Um, let's have a look. Uh, you know, so, let's have a look at my uh, avatars here. Does it affect how you see me if I look like, I don't know, this, for example? Or this? Mm. Or this? I see. Yes, yes. Love yeah, it. They, I mean, it does affect you, right? If, if I came on like that, this every time. <laughs> True enough, yeah. Yeah. All right, this one. <laughs> <laughs> what was that I kind of like, I I like this, this. One. I kind of like this. Is it Semi Agog's art? Yeah, yeah I mean, Semi Agog Semi has made some excellent yeah. ones. And, uh... He's he's absolutely bell a banger. Uh, um, that one is, I love it. Um, but yeah, I mean, all of them, all of them though, project uh, a certain image, right? And you know, it's like, I mean, how can I put this? L little things do affect you. I mean, I, I remember working in a job once where. Um, you know, it, it makes a difference whether you're wearing a suit or not wearing a suit, for example, and how you carry yourself. Um, mm -hmm. I remember I used to work in a job and if I was on a very important call, I'd find myself like standing up on the phone mm -hmm. because whether you're standing up or sitting down affects how you carry yourself. Right. Yes, so all of these, yeah. all of these little things, um, absolutely have an effect. And if, if you see yourself as a, as a 12 year old kind of shy schoolgirl. You know, I mean, maybe maybe that plays into why you don't have the confidence to step step to a real girl in in, in the real world. Very because good point. Very you're, good you're point. thinking of yourself as a shy schoolgirl. Yes, I like that. You should be um, like, uh, you know, Alexander Kolchak or some like, you know, white army kind of general. You know. You know, I mean, in, in some ways. I picked George Sanders uh, as my avatar when I made this channel, but uh, mm -hmm. you know, one of the sexiest men in the world. I am not as sexy as George Sanders in real life, but in some way, it's aspirational, right? I'm looking up to somebody. I like it. Somebody yeah. I'd like to be, or something like that. Maybe I should rethink mine. <laughs> but I mean, maybe it's. Mm -hmm. what, what I'm saying is, though, it's better to have one that's aspirational than, than one that's, mm -hmm. in a way, only ever going to, only ever going to kind of pull you down. And I would say if you're a fully grown man, having a having a shy, shy or weeping schoolgirl as your avatar, mm -hmm. I mean, what can it ever say about you? I mean, you're you're a woman, yes. DOA. As a woman, right? Let, let's let's just take these people at face value. Oh, it's very hard out there. Okay. You're a woman who goes in these spaces, okay? Um, mm -hmm. theoretically at least, theoretically. Um, there's a there's a very slim chance that somebody like you could get with somebody like that, but if they've got a schoolgirl as their avatar, what what is your kind of gut instinctual reaction to that as a woman? Instant instant turn off, um, because it's it because it, I I see the picture and in my mind I'm talking to somebody, but their avatar is ah like a little you know cutesy pigtails and because it reminds me of. I don't know, like Peppa Pig cartoons that my little cousins watch. So I immediately associate them with like juvenile behavior. Whereas someone mm -hmm. like some Chad comes in and it's like, you know, fash waffen. It's like, oh, hey, up. Yeah. See what I'm saying? See? See? See what I'm saying? Um, yeah. yeah. Women yeah. like masculine men. Who'd have thought, you know? They were, um, so, uh, yeah. Let, anyway, let's carry, let's carry and, on. And gentlemen. And gentlemen, I should say, you know. <laughs> El Cid Leon says, <clears throat> Hayao Mazaki is correct that anime is a mistake. It's full of otaku. It was inevitable that this happened. Japan has dropped rock bottom since 1945. I mean, yes, there is an element of this where um, Japan has become like, J Japan is occupied by America. Um, you know, it was literally conquered in World War II. 
and much like Europe, much like Germany, in fact, um, has remained uh, uh, with the greatest respect of respect to Japanese people. It, it's a cucked nation, right? It's it's been cucked. It, it was defeated in war, and it was shamed and humiliated, not to the not to to the degree that the Germans have been, uh, because the Germans faced. Um, you know, what was in effect mass psychological warfare, the denazification program that I talked about. <clears throat> um, but there was, a, like, there was a Japanese variant of that where J Japan was kind of forced to come into the Western sphere of influence and forced in a way to be part of, you know, the, um, you know, the global, the global system. Um, now, now, because the Japanese are, a resilient people and a strong people and they've got a very strong sense of their heritage and culture, they didn't lose it all, right? But to ignore the effect of World War II, I think, would be, you know, to not see the full picture. And I, I do think that a lot of this, a lot of this weirdness that we see is, is a kind of coming to terms with what happened. Um, because... Uh, I am told that Japanese people don't really like to talk about the war. Um, you know, they, they have a strong uh, sense of, um, you know, the, the shame. Not shame because they're, they were on Team Evil or they were, you know, allied to Mustache Man, but shame for the reason they lost. Um, I think it's a understand Black that? Pigeon speak. Yeah, I think Black Pigeon speaks his channel. He's mentioned that they tend to they not not so much guilt like the West feels, but shame, a shame culture, which is you know yes, very but interesting. The, but, mm -hmm. but, the, but the, the shame is not like a kind of you know no. like um like a kind of Western moral kind of exactly oh, you, know, you with I'm the, the worst people who killed uh, you know who did the Holocaust or whatever. It's yes, yes. It, it's shame. It's shame. It's the shame that you'd feel. Because you get like you had this um, strong spirit that was broken and defeated in war, Interesting, you know, and yeah. you and you lost. So, so, so the the, the dishonor, like the 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 shame of losing. Um, yes. And I, I I actually learned a lot about this through my through my love of pro wrestling. Um, ah. One of the strange things that happened after World War Two was that. Um, uh, wrestling, pro wrestling, kind of travelled from America and uh, got into Japan, like through the back door somehow. And they've got a huge right. pro wrestling scene out there. And mm -hmm. the way they process, like def uh, victory and defeat and so on, is very, very interesting. Um, and they had this, they they had this whole um, dynamic where Japanese wrestlers would face like the gaijin, the the foreign American wrestlers. Um, mm -hmm. And a lot of that stuff, the, the World War II stuff, was not far away from the surface, if that makes any sense. Interesting. Um, yeah, that, that's an, I didn't know that. Yeah. Um, so there we go. Uh, um, Matty Ice says, Louis Laval did defend Lolly in terms of free speech. I've never seen him display anything graphic. Also, I heard him violently rant against pedos. Weird. Yeah, that, that is, I mean, Louis Laval is a pretty right-wing guy. So the fact he's got this blind spot is weird. Um, and if it, this is if, the rad radical commitment to free speech at any cost, and I just think, why just censor stuff like that? It, everything would be better. But no, you can't censor anything because free speech. It's just like, look, we may as well at this point. Binary Surfer says, "I have one way to solve this issue." Wood chipper. <laughs> hey, Binary, how's it going, man? Um, Rubios <laughs> the enjoyer says helicopter or and then he's got a bunch of symbols um <laughs> yeah i got you uh i think kick. it's a is that soldier with a gun shooting the uh the lolly enjoyer um a walrus says if aa keeps this purity spiraling we're all going to have to turn into virtuous men and proper citizens the horror Oh yeah, imagine the purity spiral of being against fucking paedophilia. <laughs> no. um, We're radical. Chris Primer says, no waifu, no laifu. Um I like that. I mean we didn't really get we didn't really get into this, but 
the whole idea of getting the the waifu, by which I mean not a not a, any old wife, but the Thai bride, the right the mail order Asian, yeah, the mail order like the yellow fever thing. I I've never really <laughs> been keen on that whole idea either. I mean, it's like where I I remember there was an extraordinary stream once where um. Morgoth was on with Dangerfield, Keith Woods. I remember and, that. Mm -hmm. And he fucking went mental on, uh, <laughs> like, the so-called white nationalists who, like, they're, you know, they're so committed to the to the struggle that they go and, like, marry a, <laughs> marry a bloody uh, Filipino or something. I, this is this is a me this is a meme on the right. I mean, I, look, I understand if you if you were already married and then you got red pilled after, but yeah, the, there is. I just think, well, what, what, don't call yourself a nationalist and get the fuck out of these spaces because we don't believe in that on the right, obviously. Like, that's a central tenet here, but it is very common, if I'm honest. And I can understand because Asian women are very beautiful. But then I also think, well, don't call yourself a nationalist, you know, just just go go forth and do your thing. But what are you doing in our spaces? Like, they hang around our spaces and talking points. It doesn't make any sense. But there we are. Stonehead, yeah. I'm based on Red Pill, but I also I also represent myself as a twelve year old girl, and you know, all the rest of it. Um, Stone Stonehat says lowering voting age will later be used as justification for a lower age of consent. They're old enough to vote, so they're old enough to yeah, exactly. I I thought that when we um, you know, in Wales they've lowered the age of consent. The, I the heard age of this. Voting I can't to, believe it. Yeah. Um, 14? I thought it was 16. Are no, you serious? 14. They've lowered it to 14. 14 year olds are going to vote? Fuck yeah. off. And foreigners. 14 year old and foreigners. Oh, fuck off. No, Can't be doing just, that. Just, just in that phrase, 14 year olds and foreigners, what do you see mm. in the horizon? You know. Well, if they can vote, then why can't they, you know, why can't they? Exactly. Mm. Have nookie. Mm-hmm. Oh, I mean, what could happen? You import predatory foreign men um, into a situation and then tell, tell, um, you know, tell mm -hmm. people who are barely past puberty that they can have sex now as well. I mean, what, what could go the, wrong? The, and that they're the perfect age to, you know. Don't, you know, the, the lowering the girls, but... of, the, is the age of consent 16 now? Or is it 18? I think so, still? yeah. No, it's, eight, it's see, 16, I think, yeah. That lowering of the age of consent to 16, I think was, I mean... Was it 18 before? Into, I think it was 18 before, and they lowered it to 16. What, in this country? Uh, was it really? Oh, yeah. I always thought it was 18. And I, I, think that was oh. driven, I think that was driven by um, the gay lobby, basically. Like, if you, if, you look oh. at, if you look at the politicians who were involved in pushing that for many years, uh, they all had a bit of, like, Clapham Common... Uh, Jippery mm. in the, you know, in their closet. Like, absolutely. Elm gets Remember that guy, uh, was it Simon Hughes, the lib liberal Democrat? Like, he yep. was one of the big, he was one of the big guys who was uh, mm. all for this. And, oh, lo and behold, you know, he, uh, he was caught on Clapham Common and all the rest of it. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, every time. So, yeah. Every time. Mm -hmm. It is, it is a trope. I'm, Aaron McIntyre. When he talks about the LGBT <clears throat> stuff as a Trojan horse for this stuff, it's absolutely the case. Um, course, and when yeah. guys like, I mean, I know he's a bit of a, like a like a lol cow these days, you know, Milo and so on. But when he when he talks about these sorts of things, you should listen to him um, mm -hmm. because he like he's, he's been very in these honest spaces about and, it. Like he's been yeah. in these spaces and knows basically. So mm -hmm. um, anyway, let's carry on. I, I think. I think what happened was that um, the it was sixteen. It was sixteen for st straight people, right. and it was eighteen for gay men. And they they lowered oh, the they lowered right. the. I'm pretty sure they lowered the homosexuality one. Um, I don't ever remember what it was eighteen, but mm. apparently it was been sixteen for a long time. But they they mm. wanted to make it parity. Between the like the gay and the straight, I see. Um, right, right. Yeah, I mean those whatever whatever uh, <clears throat> activists say these days, those two connect those two issues are connected. In the the reason that 
um, there has been a taboo around homosexuality um, all through the ages is because it was linked, for right or for wrong, it was linked in the minds of lawmakers and what you know wise people in the community with pederasty mm -hmm. and, th and that's why those two issues have always gone together um yes and i mean you know you don't really really need to know much about how the gay scene work how the gay scene works to know that that has remained the case whether they're mm -hmm. open about it or not um so it should like you know as people who care about the, the moral well-being of your nation you shouldn't mm -hmm. just like pretend things aren't true for the sake of political correctness um so um anyway let's mm -hmm. carry on um qwerty says not gonna lie i smacked a few lads around and we're closer than ever ever institutional beatings work if you understand why mm -hmm. it happened living through your fears makes you stronger being dangerous is empowering um, uh, Aurelian Narcius Caesar says, my form of escaping is returning to Rome. Is this unhealthy coping? What is in visiting room? As in... No, I think like going back to Roman times, like going back to the... <laughs> um, like like in, the, in, the sounds... in, the fa in the fantasy space, you know. As long as it's in proportion, I don't see the issue. Yes. I mean, I, I would say that the Romans have a healthier... <laughs> idea of what it is to be like a virtuous person than um than you'd get from uh, a, a lot of these things that we've been looking at today but it's still it, it still is a fantasy world you still have to like get into reality somehow um which uh, you know g given the state of the world i know is difficult but you should tr everybody should make a make an effort you have a to duty to try if you believe in improving demographics and things and yeah yeah i'm gonna I'm going to make an effort to, um, I think um, <laughs> uh, uh, some people wanted to meet up with me uh, later this week. And, uh, you know, I, I find myself like automatically reaching for excuses and things, but I'm going to try to like make my best effort to make sure yeah. I go because it's important to like get out and like Absolutely. be in the real world and not like get offline and all this sort of stuff. It's also, we, it's also pleasant, you know, when you, get over the first few minutes of shyness or whatever. Mm. White, nice Raven. White Raven says, this is the disgusting side of anime. I could not stand even at 16. I'm glad I distanced myself from this stuff. This garbage leads to you uh, to having girlfriend pillows. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, Marbly says, this is porn induced. Right wing youth are very online. Nathan yeah, there's lots of Kumas on the right, for sure. Uh, Nathan C. J. Hood says, "We, I mean, and, and this is this is why I, I really, I really do think that the even if it's just a starting point, that whole red pill community can at least give young men some pointers yes. for how to become more men, become like men, and Definitely. not like." not goes, people yeah. hiding from manhood <clears throat> by pretending to be <clears throat> schoolgirls as we've been talking about exactly 100 percent uh nathan hood says weebs divide the soul and the body she she looks 100 but she's actually 100 lust after anime 12 year old okay as not real <laughs> dualism leads to evil i mean yeah what about this argument that you know in the law she's actually like <clears throat> 1000 years old and not 12 year old yeah, but her, her physical form in the law is also that of a six-year-old. So that, and, and if men are visual and they're looking at that whilst getting stimulated, then yeah, you're a nonce. Fellow <laughs> Ethel Ward, so yeah, I mean they're just trying to do like some game, like word Absolute games. Absolute cope. It. Yeah. Fellow Ethel Ward says, if you are reading this, please make sure to ban all comments that have an anime character profile on your social medias. These are lolbert parasites. Um, yeah, I mean, do you think that's a good policy? Just like if you see the if you see the school girl in the avatar, just flat flat block until they change it. Flat block, yeah. Bully harass and flat block. <laughs> Aurelian Natia Caesar says, <laughs> "I can explain a bit about the Japanese issue with men. During the 1980s, women started to enter the workforce and started having kids really late in life." 
leading to coddling as well as the market crash. So, so there we go. So mm -hmm. basically that generation of men who became herb herbivores had mothers who entered the workforce uh, in, the, in the 1980s. Oh, interesting. Okay, interesting. Uh, Perennial White Strake says, Japan was degenerate in the so-called based samurai era. They had child prostitution and brides. J. Clavel's Shogun book opened my eyes and research confirmed it. Historians mm -hmm. ignore this. Apologies if mentioned. Uh, I didn't know that. I didn't know that, but it's not... Um, Shogun. It's not surprising. I mean, people have like, people romanticize and have these kind of fantasy versions of these other cultures. Um, but without wishing to sound too much like a kind of post-colonial, like Edward Said or something, there's a little bit of Orientalism in there. It's just like, exo it's, 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 the, it's the classic Western love of the exotic, you know, um, where you're, you're looking to another culture and you're valorizing it um because yeah. you cannot see the flaws in it whereas you can see the flaws in your own um this is I mean, also the case with um the slavabu like the eastern europe fetish you know very common yeah yeah at the moment the, the valorization of the ukrainian woman that you're seeing at the moment you know um, oh just like um it's always like poland or the east ex eastern bloc but um you know it's being kind of based but Oh, no, well, not the women. The women are beautiful, but you know what I mean? Just basically like a constant preference of, or, or it's like a kind of wanting to constantly shrug off one's culture in favour of another. I guess it is like that like, oikophobia feeling, you know? Mm. Aristocratic Owl says, preference. I just do the Victorian thing and keep whatever weird fetishes I have down and never in the public <laughs> square. That's right, Aristocratic Owl. Keep it suppressed. Keep it keep under it the surface where it belongs. <laughs> Back in the closet with you all. Um, I mean, they'll never destroy it. This is the thing. You'll never destroy it, but there should be, it shouldn't be championed. It should be suppressed. It should be made shameful. Like that is the way that Western culture has always dealt with these things. And that is a good thing. Make the handmaid's tale real in real life, you know. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, <laughs> Uh, maybe, maybe, maybe I'm only joking. Cheeky, uh, probably, a bit, probably a bit too far. Nathan Hood says, uh, These are freaks. Biden picks to rule over you. Uh, yeah, indeed. Um, uh, I watches the watchman says, Hey, AA, I sent a DM to your Get Fresh account, just notifying you and saying I appreciate your content. Well, thank you very much. Uh, I watches the watchman, it means so much. Um, yeah, Charlie Get Fresh doesn't really check uh, her DMs, I'm afraid. Ch Charlie Get Fresh is a, just a, an assistant of mine who posts mm -hmm. video links and nothing else. Um, <laughs> Yankula says, some areas in Osaka and Tokyo are sickeningly de degenerated. However, in smaller cities in the countryside, it's vastly different. AA's idea about the nattering old ladies enforcing social order is 100% true. Uh, and that is from Japan. That's a thousand yen from Japan. Uh, I don't know how much how much that is in real money, um, but uh, thank you very much. Very generous. Um, I would um, I would say that um, the how can I put this? Uh, um, I, I do think that if men set the moral laws women enforce them at the ground level and i know people don't want to admit that but it it is the role of women in all societies the, the women are the like who is the who are the people who enforce the sjw codes today most zealously it mm. is the women it is the liberal yeah. white women right um but They're very hardcore like, about it back in like christian you know um, when it was like the Christian Puritanical Society in New England, you can you can bet yourself that it was the women who enforced that most zealously. Um, that mm -hmm. is the role of women in all in all societies. Um, they are the ones on the ground level who um, kind of. And I I I know D D in particular has some uh, 
he has some reservations about this, like the idea of the um, the kind of irritating, tutting, hen pecking woman <laughs> in Marks and Spencers or whatever. But the fact of the matter is, is that um, without those people, society would fall apart. In my, in my view, That's very you true. need those. Mm -hmm. You need those. You need those characters. Um, you know, in in any in any social situation I've ever seen, it's the women who uh, regulate and maintain um, the basic standards. Uh, whether it's like your school summer fate, or I mean, I I, I mentioned like my um, my dad's family in Iran. You know, my my grandmother, even though she was four foot ten. She was also um, somebody who set the tempo for the whole household. You know, um, she would, uh, and even though it's a, even though it's nominally a patriarchal culture, and my my grandfather very much was like an like an old fashioned patriarch. Um, she would be the one running the schedule. She would be the the one kind of right. uh, marshalling all of the other women to get the food ready. Um, telling people that you know, Cafe. come on now, the, the, the get the guests are coming. Come on, we have to be there. She was basically the general who set the tempo. If that makes any sense, <laughs> the general, um, the general. I got you, yeah. Um, and I, I, I do think that's what women do. They do do that, and I, I think that. Um, how can I say? Like, there are deep rooted reasons for that. I, I think the men can be a little bit, um, can be a little bit abstract at times. They can be a bit kind of like you know they kind of got lost in ideas or whatever certainly if you're me mm -hmm. um and they you know they 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 sit like sometimes men don't care about like little niceties and so on um whereas women do yeah so and anyway um that's just my view uh M mndb says this stream is amazing you're amazing AA. well thank you very much um there was a go there, there's a synth plug do you <laughs> um yeah, one, did it. Hey, nice one. Uh, the dank one says, Virgin Chung Lee legs versus Chang Zangief legs. Uh, yeah, Zangief, <laughs> is a, Zangief is a Russian wrestler, by the way. Um, right, right. <laughs> uh, El Sid Leon says, in fact, there's a, I found one of a, a Zangief giving Chung Lee a spinning pile driver. So look that up in your own time. <laughs> El Sid Leon says, you're wrong. Japan was under America after 1945. Uh, well, we, we discussed that. Um Journeyman says, um, there was once a weeby tipper who simped for a cartoon nipper, a dirty lolly <laughs> nonce who got hit in his bonce and ended up in the chipper. So there we go. Nice, nice. Son of Tiamat oh, says, dissident right-wingers with anime PFPs think that if they're based and fashy enough, they're permitted to their weird kink. Jokes on them. The NSDAP was never right-wing. So there we go. Um, uh, there's quite a few more of these. Uh, uh, Polish ambassador says, lolly shit is the equivalent of a flat earther. Not all con theories are fake, nor all anime filthy. All youth is now Ghostbusters 8 strong woman edition. Uh, yep. Um, the English loyalist says, Weebery is becoming hey. common. No wonder noncery is becoming more and more pushed, as seen from the left. I find it sad that women have to compete with drawings and degrade themselves to gain attention. Yeah, I mean, this is another way of, of putting what we were looking at with the Chung Li phenomenon, DOA, is mm -hmm. the, the fact that those women who in real life have made their thighs look like Chung Li's thighs, in another sense are competing with the fictional character Chung Li for the attention of men. Mm -hmm. Why else are they doing yes. it? They're not doing it for their own self-esteem, are they? They're, they're doing it no, of course not. they're doing it to get attention. Well they they're longing they're longing for male desire, I suppose, which um and there's nothing wrong with self-improvement to maximize your chances of finding a fella, of course, and keeping yourself in shape and well, but I mean, um, that, that is, it's almost like a kind of morphing of that because it looks very unusual. It's not really natural on a body, is it, I suppose? But... No, because they're trying to make <laughs> themselves look like a fantasy fantasy artwork, essentially. Yes, quite, quite. 
Kirio Skuro says, the culture and environment is saturated in estrogen and feminist ideology. Weebs mm -hmm. need to pump iron. Exercise promotes testosterone along with supplements such as stinging nettle root. They need encouragement mm -hmm. to fight back. Yeah, that's, that's positive advice. Get, Charles get, Thompson get your says, trainers on. AA. I haven't eaten fast food for a week. <laughs> you did good Costa earlier, though, didn't you? I mean, well, coffee doesn't count, does it? Uh, depends if you had a brownie or not. I did. I did have a brownie. Oh, they are. I do like those Costa brownies, though, I will say. Good call. No, it wasn't a brownie. It was a, what do you call it? Mm. Um, pecan loaf is what I had. Ooh, tasty. Charles Thompson says, a big aspect of what made mi uh, mid-century Germans angry was the insane sex industry caused by the economic depression, like modern OnlyFans. I mean, yeah, one of the one of the things that people may not know about the book burnings that uh, we've always been told about, it's not like the mid-century Germans were burning like Plato and Socrates and, and you know, uh, Hegel. Um, they were burning um, books about transgenderism and it was all kind of like, uh stuff that you describe a lot of it was uh, like mm. a, a lot of it was that right um i, I mean i can so. imagine there was maybe interesting some, uh, maybe there was a maybe there was some like marxist literature in there as well maybe i, I, don't I think know. they had uh he hemingway and uh, interesting they had all quiet on the western front but uh a couple of classics but yeah, from what i understand a lot of it was pedo stuff you know big nig 420 says no d today so it looks like <laughs> i have to simp for big doa nig. Uh, sorry to be a sloppy, sloppy seconds, but I appreciate it. Absolute Defender says, please do a stream on Dragon Ball or Legend of the Legend of the Galactic Heroes. <laughs> That's not going to happen. That's not going to happen, is it? Matty I says, one major problem in my view is women's absolute refusal to face criticism. Women set the standards for men, but will let themselves get to 250 pounds and their only hobby is television. Do you want to, mm -hmm. as the woman on the stream, do you want to respond yeah, that's, to that? Yeah, that, that's a fair that's a fair point. I understand the complaint. I definitely do. Uh, women are sensitive, and I, I get it. It's a, it's a difficult one. Um, I, do, I do hear where you're coming from. Yeah. Oh, now, I, I will just I say, like, say. I, I've been involved with uh, women in one way or another for the past. Oh, yeah. Let's work this out now. 20, at least 20 years. <laughs> 23, 24 years, maybe, maybe longer, 25 years, mm -hmm. uh, which sounds like a, I mean, it is a lifetime, basically. Um, and I have never once known a woman to accept any responsibility for anything they've ever done. Mm -hmm. um, and that's across like that's a tricky one. quite a few different women. So just my observation. Um, well, that's a, yeah, that is a difficult one. And uh, I, I understand. See, I don't know how to deal with that because. Um, yeah, if you feel like you're talking to a wall and, and, and nothing goes in, then you're obviously going to pull away from women. I imagine that is annoying. Uh, but I, no. I, I also think that there's a lot of um, hidden egalitarianism in a lot of this, right? It's like, oh, um, basically the complaint is women aren't men, right? Well, no shit. Well, tr tr true. Men. Yes, that yeah. is true. Yes, so if you don't have a like, based opinion, it's like, well, you want her to be a woman, but th that's how females think, honey. Mm. You know, and when, and I mean, this is a time like I, I, I don't have the answer. They fucking drive me up the wall, as you know. I don't have an, <laughs> I don't have an answer for this. It's just a perpetual mm. headache for men, right? That oh, like women I'm are sorry. irrational, emotional, don't mm. take responsibility, yes. act like children, all, all the rest of it. All those things are true, right? But there's nothing you can do about like if you're if you're um, uh, you, you we just have to come to terms with that. There's not like there's nothing you're ever going to do about that. All you can what, do what, is concentrate what? on on yourself and what you can do. You're never going to change women ever. What, what's some what's some practical advice that women can have in mind? Like obviously, you try to be self conscious, obviously, of the way we act, but. <sighs> Do you think just more of an awareness of this? I, I don't know. I, I, th I think it's just a waste of time uh, to to try to make women, mm. you know, because they're not, they're just not going to process things in the same way. 
I mean, my my mm-hmm. advice to everybody is to read those old, like those 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 much mocked old fashioned books. You know, like men are from men are from Mars, women are from Venus. <laughs> Um, right right like uh you know why yeah. why men lie and women can't read maps all those sort of books right <laughs> because because as much as people mock them the people who wrote those books wrote them after like literally like 40 years of counseling real people and they based them on mm. actual observations uh about yeah. the differences between men and women that everybody can recognize and i think a lot of the pro- a lot of the problems people face is the expectation that men can be like women. We can't. We're never going to want to talk about emotions. We don't want to fucking talk about it. We don't want to be like, you know, uh, emotionally supportive or whatever the fuck. We fucking you, will you know. talk about it. Um, so, so, so that's, that's, that's one, that's one part of it. But then the flip side yes. is you, you can't have the expectation of women to behave like men as well. Um, right. which is which, where I think a lot of this comes from. And I, and I, listen, as uh, you know, as someone on the verge of two failed marriages, I'm not the best person to talk to about this because I have limited, <laughs> I have limited patience with women, as people know. But um, you know, that's an age, that's an age old question. Moan like just generally moaning about it um, is not is not going to get us anywhere. You have to focus. Men have to focus on themselves. This is where Julius Evola when he talks about like feminism as a problem with men, not as a problem with women is basically correct. All men can do ever is focus on themselves. You're never going to change the women. Um, and I know people get fed up about that. Like they get angry about it because it feels unfair, right? Mm-hmm. It just feels fundamentally unfair to a lot of men. Oh, not only do women have all the laws and stuff written to benefit them, but also they don't take any responsibility for themselves too. Right. Mm-hmm. It feels like they're hard done by mm-hmm. But isn't isn't that what they want in a patriarchy where men get the tough end? Do you know what I'm saying? And women get like I can never really work out which one it is they want. Isn't that the brutal truth of the difference between the sexes? And is that something yeah. they wanted they say is desirable? I don't know. But I, I hear what you're saying. We are mollycoddled for sure. <clears throat> um Matty Ice says, oh, yeah, sorry, uh, a Polish ambassador says 80% of ropers found a good girl, or so they thought. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Malfeast999 says, uh, the moment AA manages to ban Nickelodeon and Netflix and their trans kid parades, I change my troll avatar away. Keep up the good work, uh, AA. Okay. Well, be so he's, just tro- he's just trolling, he reckons. Mm-hmm. Well, Vladimir Putin has, man- has managed it in- inadvertently. Well, good point. Uh, didn't uh, Netflix get banned from all of Russia or something? Well, like Netflix have said they're not going to broadcast it. I mean, so many more, wins. Uh, it, mm. So many wins for Putin. Pornhub said they're not going to do the, you know, uh, <laughs> Pepsi Cola <laughs> pulled out. It's just like every single one of them a win. Like they think they're punishing. I was going to say, like Russia, Russia's having a nice cleanse of uh, having a good clear out. You know, it's like yeah, you get you get deplugged from Globo Homo, and uh, oh, oh, funny no. enough, all Come the back. all the dege- <laughs> all the degenerate shit goes away. You know, <laughs> Come back. Uh, Doctor Squirrel Boy says, "I never understood the ripped woman fetish." Anyway, if we are banning things over a perceived societal harm, how do you feel about firearms? Well, that's that's a whole different that's a whole different debate, I would say, mm. um, a whole different debate, um, and I and it's so different. I don't think that there there are, there are any points of overlap between this issue that we've been talking about and 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 the whole Second Amendment thing at all. So, Aurelian Natius Caesar says, "I am an American nationalist, but I have a preference for Asian women. Does this make me not a nationalist?" Uh, DOA. Yes, you're a, you're you're a race mixer. That's not annulled in nationalism. Sorry. Either you're serious about it or you're not. So, up to you. Ron Wood says, "Have you seen the film Pig yet? I thought it was pretty on the head as far as decaying and fake structures and coping with modern loss loss in general." No, I have not seen the film Pig. Sounds interesting. Sounds Pig. interesting. All right, I think uh, I think that's all of them. Uh, oh, Aristocratic Owl, last one says Jonathan uh, 
uh, Pegu has mentioned once that the desire for cosplay today comes from people's desire to be part of something bigger when modern life doesn't provide it for people. Um, I mean, that's a very, I would say that's a very generous take. Um, in my observation, a lot of cosplaying comes from women who somehow find themselves in nerd scenes who um, need something to give themselves attention. I'm sorry, I'm sorry to put it so bluntly, but mm. I'm a lot more cynical than that because most of the cosplayers are female and most of the yes. cosplaying is done in nerd spaces. So it's basically just a female way of getting attention from men who spend all day playing video games or board games or reading comic books or whatever else. Um, and as these things have become more mainstream, um, the lengths to which women need to go to get that attention have, you know, have uh, uh, become more extreme, I guess, you know. So so now, so now to get the nerds to pay attention to you as opposed to their hobby um, at Comic-Con, point, yeah. um, you know, go dressed as Chung Lee with a massive ass, for example. It is like, no, it's literally notice me senpai, yeah. It, which is actually kind of healthy in a way because at least they're looking for... You know, male attention, I guess. But. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, as, as just someone who knows the who who has known like board game circles and things, you know, you're dealing with some very nerdy men, and you know, you'll be lucky if some of them wash. You know, quite why you want attention from them, I don't know, but there is this weird phenomena that as these things have permeated more, um, you are going to get like women who who for some reason want to get into them women don't really want to play like military board games so it's like well <laughs> axis and well, allies yeah uh, you know they're not, they, they don't want to sit with fucking middle-aged <laughs> men uh recreating no. like napoleon's assault on where wherever <laughs> um so to get to get something from the event Settlers maybe they can go but maybe they can go dressed mm -hmm. as catwoman instead you know mm -hmm. of course uh, Ron Wood says, uh, sorry, Mar Marcos588 says, women are and can just be, men must become. So, th so there we, so there we go. Um, uh, I, I mean, I, I would say, I mean, it, he's a, he's a strange source for this, but I, I do think the, that book on gender by Evola, um, mm. where he gets into the kind of almost like the pure forms of masculinity and femininity, femininity, is quite clarifying in a way because he doesn't just say that women are just passive and can just be whatever. Um, he does actually put particular stress on the lover and the mother as the two roles that women can embody to become something greater than themselves. Whereas men mm. can become hero or, um, or priest essentially, you know, so either like pure action or pure reason. Um, mm. Whereas, women kind of dissolve themselves either into their man or into their children. Um, I'll have to so, read that one. I haven't read that one. Yeah, it's called Eros and the Mysteries of Love. Very interesting book. Eros Very and the Mysteries of book. Love. Yeah. Right. I'll order that uh, one. I can, I, can send you, I can send you a yeah, virtual copy if, you, if, if you'd oh, like. Oh, that'd be great. Uh, yes, please. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, it's kind of an interesting thing, though, because um, you're right in a way that male self-actualization is all about losing oneself in the embodiment of action whereas female transcendence is all about losing oneself in the devotion of another to another person if that makes any sense so it does like it's not an equal thing um you know it, it's not like and, and I, I think one of the issues at a, at a very spiritual level that the west is finding is this fantasy of like the um the teenage kick-ass girl who can be the warrior you know that there's a very strong push in hollywood to try to yes. make the woman the knight boss girl yeah boss you know, lady the, the, yeah the boss girl who goes on the quest ray from star right. wars and this is just i'm afraid bollocks the quest is the masculine form mm -hmm. right the, the 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 feminist always wants to the feminist always wants to destroy the, the traditional narrative of the damsel in distress who is being saved by the hero. 
Mm. Where and and the extent to which people have forgotten about the traditional form, um, or, or the extent to which that traditional form is being subverted, also lose also lose sight of how a woman can actually self actualize. So, so I do think there are there are things that women could do. Women on our side of things, I mean, which is yeah. basically to. I mean, this is a discussion you guys, girls could have on Women's Hour. I'm sure well, Birdie would have a give us Give us some advice, because it'd yeah. be, ni be nice to hear, yeah. Mm. I, I'm sure Birdie would have a few things to say, because, Go see, on. this is the basic problem with Birdie, though, right? Birdie wants to be the man, like, not the man in her relationship with Alex. I mean, she wants to embody male roles. She wants to be the hero. She wants to be the knight. She wants to be the... And women just can't be that, I'm afraid. Or mm. the, if they try to be that... They're going against their own nature and they won't be happy, is what Evola says. Just as if if a man tries yes. to if a man tries to be the mother, or if a man tries to be nothing but the lover, he's gonna be like very unfulfilled or, or a deep level. Mm -hmm. Um and if a, if a woman tries to find herself, quote unquote, in doing male stuff, she'll find an emptiness. And and, and I'm convinced that that is why so many of these career women once they have kids, yeah. actually go part-time or they end up giving up their career because they find a much deeper meaning in being the mother than they ever did in their career. Mm. Does that make sense? Do you think that's why, yeah, do you think that's why men feel, do they feel maybe, um, it's been interesting watching the Ukrainian stuff the past couple of weeks because I've noticed a lot of men, it's almost like they have a hankering to be part of the war. And obviously, you know, I, I'm not a jingoist or, or or anything mm -hmm. but do you think a lot of men feel unfulfilled with that with the lack of sort of not adventure but i forget which philosopher who was who it, it, it was that said that all men privately long to be a sort of soldier and there's that maybe just like you said that kind of questing nature is now no longer something that is part of their the life in a way that it, it maybe could have been is is do you think that that lack of fulfillment is is part of yeah their... ab absolutely i think especially young men want to be yeah. in the like they they want to devote themselves to a higher cause is what it is right which is, yes yeah. which is part of that uh evolian hero path if you want to put it that way uh and it's yeah. not just evola evola is only ever just pointing out eternal truths basically but you know you go right back to the odyssey or whatever you know the, or the iliad yeah. um this is what you know this is what uh men have always done you know they've 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 tr they fulfill themselves through prowess and feats on the battlefield um or you can become the the pure man of contemplation but mm -hmm. that involves also like a giving up of the like a giving up of worldly things and the giving up of the flesh that's a much more mm -hmm. um platonic route uh you, you know and, and that's the idea of the of the monk essentially who who doesn't take a wife who doesn't mm -hmm. Who doesn't, um, you know, who forgoes the world of action and becomes the becomes like, like a wandering a kind of, aesthetic, yeah, 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 like like the Sufi or something like that. You know, that's why they called mm -hmm. him the Sufi of uh, of Rome. Um, mm -hmm. So those are the two uh, paths available to the man. And, and I have people in the chat saying, like AA, saying you can't stand up to the feminist narrative. If if you take even if you take these traditional ideas seriously. The way to stand against feminism is to is to b fight back against this idea that women can be men. No, they can't. Mm. They can't be, and they shouldn't want to be. And and ultimately, is... they'll be happier if then. Sorry to talk over you. Uh, you know, no, please. Uh, I interrupted. Later, but, I interrupted. Um, Go on. But what I'm saying is, women ultimately will be happier if they stop struggling against their their actual nature. If that makes any sense. I like that idea of struggling against nature. Well, it, I, honestly, this is always something that was so it's so peculiar about feminism to me is that their idea of I empowering or emboldening women was always to um, uh, to encourage them to take on behaviours that were just just to basically a replication of men, um, which seemed to be an antithesis to the feminist idea that women can have their own space and their own identity without needing to 
uh, I'm not sure where this I why why so many women long to be men and what what this comes from, but I have to look into. I have to read the book though. I'd like to read it. Yeah, mm. um, I mean, just just um, just be aware. Uh, Evela is not some sort of puritan, and there is like there's some there's some moments of, there's some moments in that book where he's like, yeah, you know, you, you, <laughs> um, you, you can uh, you can find transcendence through like uh, through like an orgy or something like that, you know. So hey, there are parts okay, where he's surprising, not, not Roger Scruton, then <laughs> he's surprisingly like racy in parts, you know. Oh um, yeah, all right then. I'll keep that in mind. I mean, Evelyn never married. Like, you know, like he forwent having a family oh, well. and all sorts. So, interesting. Anyway, what, deliberately or he just yeah, never found uh, he was he was he was like, oh, you know, oh, family no. is a family is like a bourgeois idea, and uh, you know, like a <laughs> so, <laughs> based. So, yeah, some yeah. there's some rather interesting elements to oh, all. I look forward to reading that. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Marcos five eight eight says, um, Rome became great because men love her. We need Rome to love, an aspiration, an ideal, a dream, mm. a wonder to leave our children. Yeah. Um, I mean, a nation, see, a home. The, 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 the thing is, is that if you really take some of these things that I've been talking about seriously, you do have to confront some odd things as well. Like, for example, and, and again, lots of people won't like me saying this, but. Um, I mean, we we discussed this at length on the on the Christmas party stream, I, I recall. But um, the 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 modern idea of the domestic family space is is in some way like feminine and not not what the traditional men were all about. You know, I mean, how many how many like Greek epics were told about? men who just like settled down with a wife and cooked a barbecue you know i mean mm. that's not like that's never been like the the division of uh the vision of masculinity um mm -hmm. and the and I, and I think that it, it's very much a product of post-war conservatism and I, I and and it's rather difficult to critique the idea of family from the from the right if that makes any sense. But I, I do mm. think that the hold that that 2.4 family vision has over everybody um, needs to be like questioned a little bit. I'm not saying that family mm. is a bad thing, obviously. I'm not saying it's a bad yeah. thing at all. I'm just saying that the idea that the family is the sacred thing is actually an impediment in some cases to um, kind of masculine self-actualization if that makes any sense at the very least young men who who uh i think furious put this best like in rome they had this idea that um settling down and having a family was a distinct moment in a man's life that came mm -hmm. after he'd had his adventures yes right? I see what you're and yes. now now you're an experienced and worldly man now you can take a bride, right? Yes, yes. Um, so you've got this idea of like the a forty year old who's been through several voyages and battles and so on. He's back. He's hardened. Yeah. Now it's time. Now it's time that he's got wisdom and so on. Now he can be a patriarch. That makes sense. Yeah, that, that actually makes a lot of sense. Um, to bring, I imagine it makes you a good father as well to be a little more worldly and uh, travelled. Marco Polo. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So there we uh, there we go. DOA, do you have anything, any last words you want to say on this before we wrap up? Oh, I just wanted to make it double clear that obviously what we're talking about today, you know, obviously I'm talking uniquely about weebs and I, you know, I'd hate, I can sometimes see in the comments, there is a lot of tension and frustration between the sexes and I, I would never want to men for, to go away feeling that I'm criticizing them or undermining them or humiliating them. You know, I love our men very much and um, I, try, I try my best as I can to, to sympathize and understand where you're coming from. But this obviously wasn't about men in general, it's just about weeps so i hope i hope i can make that clear just to leave you with that obviously uh everyone in these chats is very based and cool and uh, i like very much so be a dibby weeb F fellow ethelward last super chat says female cosplayers are only in it for the money and the status not a relationship they would 
all admit, uh, despite being a slut, they already have a boyfriend. So there we go. Cos female cosplayers are just kind of like glorified mm. OnlyFans in a way. Um, anything you'd like <laughs> to sh- Anything you would like to shill, DOA? Um. Not really. Uh, people always ask why I don't make many videos. I just don't have time, but I might. I might try and make some more the next month or so. So I can. I'll, I'll shill your channel for you, AA. How about that? Keep tuning in. I can't believe you said I rushed you on that video. You took fucking weeks to make <laughs> <laughs> weeks. I took a week working all day, and I don't know how you make videos so quickly. I don't know how working you do. Working nine but... to five. What a way to make <laughs> a living. <laughs> more or less. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I'm not that young. <laughs> um, all right, Dude. and I, I, I will just, um, I will just say, uh, please, uh, you buy my courses, join the channel, buy a mug, but most importantly <laughs> of all, buy my courses. Yeah. Uh, oh, I forgot to do the. Damn it! I forgot to do the uh, the sale. I want to buy that. P- I want. I want to go and buy a two grand PC. Do you? Eh? Yeah, but you also Fuck. you also want to buy that do- that dog rug, don't you? That uh, the gambling dogs. You know, everyone knows that famous <laughs> painting of the gam- the gambling dogs. I I told AA about two weeks ago. I had a dream that he had it hanging in his lodge. So now I feel like it's a sign he's got to get it. Then he revealed oh. that his family used to have one, but it was a fabric, like a naff. No offense, but dead tacky it sounded. <laughs> no, it wasn't. It was the dogs playing uh, snooker. You know the one. Uh, it's no, they're gambling, are they? Oh, sno- oh, is that like the knockoff version? Is the snooker? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, yeah, I make yeah. A, I, 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 have, I need to make a coupon code. Bear with me. Sorry. I'm going to make a coupon code to try to raise funds to buy a new PC, which I'm about <laughs> to go and do. Hold on. Um, have you noticed, by the way, I didn't buy the sofa, but mm. I'm just like, yeah, I'll spend two grand on it. I PC, did no notice. I tell you what, I was, I was looking for sofas earlier. They're so expensive. I know. Six grand for I, a I sofa. Think it's the... be... And only two seats. You must be joking. I think it's the um I think it's the price of wood is one of the one lumber has become wood. greatly more expensive in the um mm. you know, since the inflation with COVID and now the war and all the rest of it. Mm. Um lumber has been one of the real problem items. I tell you what, I'll do the sale on UO oh, tomorrow. Maybe. I'll do the sale on UO tomorrow. I can't. My internet's <laughs> being slow. So, all right. All right. Thank you very much, everyone. Thanks, now, everyone. Get out. <laughs>